Yeah, buddies. It's the uh, Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. Gail Bennington on maternity leave. Guess who was first time ever picking up a big rattle and playing with it today? Me. No, it was Juliet. <laughs> I have been laughing about something for, uh, I think, four or five days. Uh, I ran into Bonnie McFarlane the other night at the cellar. I hadn't seen her in a while, and she wanted to see baby pics. So I'm showing off like I do. And Bonnie says to me, oh, I want Raina to have a baby so bad. <laughs> That's why she is the funniest. <laughs> like literally dropping in a crazy line like that. And then I'll be like two days later, I find myself just thinking and start laughing again. And at the time, I think I was in, so sh uh, in such shock. I don't even know if I laughed. Uh, this Friday, it's Unmasked with Jim Brewer. It's a real good one. You guys are going to enjoy it. And just found out from the kinks, we're going to have Dave Davies in. Ray Davies has done the show i don't know four or five times but it's our first time meeting um the great guitar player dave davies who uh i think he invented distortion am i right about that earl definitely mastered the power chord um distortion there was always this story that he took a razor blade to a speaker you know some kind of weird thing to invent that and uh, uh, uh certainly some of the greatest songs of all time and one of the most uh, under touring bands in history i mean the amount of money they left on the table i could call live nation right now if i had 10 percent of that deal that i would book in five minutes i would never need to work again as a matter of fact i could even use that money to destroy the life of a mr chris stanley why me just to show i can do it <laughs> I hunt the most dangerous animal of all, man. That's the only hunting I do. Uh, make sure I don't step on your dish stories, Vito. Just pass them over so I don't bring them up. I was downstairs having a, a smoke, and I'm not sure. Oh, before I get into that, you can remind me, Chris. A lot of people sent me... Uh, emails yesterday saying that there was a major Twitter war that went on between Pete Dominic, uh, who works here at Sirius XM, and a Liz Sets Fire longtime friend to us, the bonfire, Jim and Sam. I don't know what happened. What did Pete do? Or maybe Liz said something and Pete went after her. I don't know how things happen. And I don't know. I can't find my way around the Twitter world but if uh i know liz works during the daytime but if she is uh, available some of her friends could check with her i'd love to get the five one one on that gossip <laughs> maybe that should go into dish because that's a little dish best served cold so i saw this up on fox news where i was downstairs having a smoky a little smoky smoke i don't vape because i hear it's bad for you apparently uh but they said some school Signed an okay that kids could wear pajamas to school. <laughs> what? You can look it up. I don't know what school it was because it was the uh, the moving news ticker tape. <laughs> I'm sure it's not ticker tape, but it's something along those lines. Scroll? News scroll? Scroll. All right, good, Chris. That's why you're going to be so difficult to hunt. You're cunning. <laughs> you have the cunningness. Um, nothing's coming up for okay to wear pajamas in school. I'm going to try Fox News. Yeah, they might have it. Now, I have never worn pajamas on the street. I'm from a different generation. I've worn basketball shorts, but never, I've never actually. Your basketball shorts are nasty, yeah, too. They're, they're they old. look, I'm going to say the truth, they look jizzed in. <laughs> oh, they are. Uh, that's, that's true. But don't wear them outside. And they do not fit you at any point. <laughs> There's no point in your body where that's comfortable. Okay, so it's a California school in the Alameda Unified School District that says they're, they're implementing an anti-dress code where students can wear pajamas. Can we wear our dicks outside of our pants? Because you have that weird little opening in the pajamas, right? You, yeah. I mean, you don't have a zipper in pajamas. No. Earl, are you a pajama guy? Not at all. I used to hate wearing them when I was a kid, too. 
I think they should only be worn in the hospital and nowhere else. As a little kid, I really wanted to wear pajamas. I think because I watched like old TV shows or whatever. Why? What were you wearing before? I don't. I can't. I can't remember. Your little underpants. <laughs> Tiny little underpants. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I made my mom buy me like a full pajama fucking outfit. And the first time I wore it, this is too warm. This is awful. I just, yeah. I, I never wore it again. That's because you didn't wear it on the street like you should to. <laughs> oh, yeah. With the anti dress code. Because <laughs> Vito's bringing in all the stuff. Vito also did a spoiler on me on tonight's uh, show, too. How did you find out? Because I thought they locked the feeds down. Uh, I saw it on Twitter. Now, but, but what are they tweeting out of the Big Brother house? I don't. It's uh, there's leak, there's production leaks. So I got that from you know uh, who I bet it is Julie Chen, just trying to fucking <laughs> Julie Chen Moonves. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you Jameis Winston was in there. Didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. did, you just say, did you bring that up first? I did not bring it up. He told me to go for it. <laughs> no, I, I swear to God, I, I, I go some that. of these things. You tell Jameis Winston to go for it. I bet he would. On the field, sure. But not <laughs> do, outside do, the field. Do, do, do. We're going to have a surprise guest uh, today yeah, for Dish. I'm going to ask you one more thing. Yeah. Is Julie Chen coming back, or is this all part of your... Uh, That's on the Dish, dish too. Thing. So find out about Julie Chen today on Dish. Just tell me, is she coming back or not? She is coming back. Really? Reports say she's coming back. Okay. TMZ says, actually. That's plenty for me. That's the best name in... Gossip, other than me. What is that? Three miles on? Thirty miles on or three miles? Thirty on? miles. On. Thirty miles what? pretty wide. I don't yeah. think it's thirty. I didn't thought I didn't think it stood for anything. I just thought it was Yeah, yeah, it's something mile zone. It's like this is where all the gossip happens. Oh shit. Something they have a, a thing. It's basically LA except for Compton. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a lot of black gossip on there. More black gossip than white gossip on TMZ. Oh yeah. Yeah, especially with the hip hop guys. There's a lot of stars I never even heard of on there. It's probably all the reality show guys. Love and basketball, that's a show, right? That's a movie. You yeah, it's fucking basketball. racist. You think dude. about love and hip hop and basketball wise. <laughs> love and hip hop love and basketball is a movie with Sanaya Lathan and Omar Epps. I'm gonna tell you something right now. You're gonna get run out of here in this fucking this kind of uh place that we are now, you know? Things yeah. have changed. It's too woke for me. I gotta go to this California school district. They seem to be lax. Why don't you just go back to that fucking school that kicked you out? Those kids were wearing pajamas everywhere. I get arrested on campus. I saw a girl just wearing a little naughty nighty walking in to get herself some breakfast. Andrew, New Jersey. Hey, guys. Uh, the town that I live in, there's two colleges, and uh, most of the girls are wearing pajamas now as it is. I know it's different than high school, but you go to, like, the Starbucks or the Dunkin' Donuts, and they got pajamas on. You know what? That's true. My bagel shop? There's a lot of girls with pajamas on. Yeah. And I'll go like this, honey. Some people rape. You got to be careful. I go, it ain't me. But there are some people that rape out there. That's a good warning. And then I just showed him a picture of Earl. <laughs> good. Wait, what? Earl's going to be the first black guy brought down by the Me Too movement. Finally. I don't even think he got away with it that long. Uh oh! All right, Liz sets fire. Is going to take us into the Pete Dominic battle. Liz, hey buddies, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Ron? Nobody likes a rat, all right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Pete Dominic is. He's a little fucking rat. What did he do to you? Well, I've never really cared for Pete very much. He had some like beefs with you know comics and people that I've liked, respected, and, you know, kind of become friends with in the past. And then uh, he had that whole thing go down with DeRosa, and um, it, he actually made DeRosa look great. Um, I missed all this. Then, what happened with him and DeRosa? Uh, DeRosa went on his show, and uh, Pete started, like, um, they were having some sort of debate, political debate, and uh, Pete just was pretty much talking over DeRosa and not letting him make any points. And when Joe could, he was like making perfect sense and pretty much making Pete look like a fucking asshole. And so uh, Pete got pissed off and cut to break. And you could hear when he cut to break, Pete go like, what the fuck, man? And, like he was pissed at DeRosa for like actually speaking his mind. And then uh, I guess DeRosa went on bonfire that night and like tore into Pete. And then apparently Pete went to the bosses 
And that's when I was like, you know what? Fuck this guy, man. He, he like, admitted it himself this morning. He's, like, this pseudo-intellectual guy who doesn't really have a thought of his own. He just kind of goes over talking points and comes across like an elitist dick. So, But how can him. you go to the bosses of Adrosa? He doesn't even work here, thank God. I guess he went to the bosses because it was on the bonfire and oh. he didn't want them playing clips of him because apparently that's up to him. Oh, okay. Oh, I missed all this. Yeah, so it was this big thing. And I don't know, whatever. He's just a dick. He was an RA in college. It says everything you need to know about him. He's a fucking rat. Mm. All right, so uh, so you were picking up for DeRosa. Who's- well, I was just... <laughs> Speaking out against who, somebody that I, I don't really care for. Now, I, yeah, I remember when today. DeRosa, he was like left wing with Anthony, but now he's moved over to right wing. He well, may be thing. right down the center. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. He's not some right wing guy. He kept being like, oh, these are those right wing tactics and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what are you talking about, dude? I'm not even right wing. Like, I'm just for common sense. And you sound like a crazy person. Mm. I missed it all. And yeah, think, it's having a little fun on Twitter, you know. Yeah. All right, Liz. Thank you. I say I wanted to say thank you for uh, posting those pics of the interns. I got a new little crush. All right, which one? What's the one with the accent? What do you think? I kind of feel like they both have accents. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I can't understand either one of them. All right. All right so, well, have a good show, guys. All right. Peace. Bye. Which one of the uh, interns are in uh, today? Oh, Vinay. Vinay's in there, sorry. Vinay and George at Magritte. Look at Vinay's got both thumbs up. He stole your fucking look. That's bullshit, Vinay. Yeah. I've been doing that for years. Whereas Chris is just laid back. He doesn't feel the need to throw the thumbs up. Well, Chris is, uh, you know, those Aussie guys are very, very comfortable wherever they go. Yeah. Here's the thing about Aussie guys. They travel anywhere in the world. They don't mind sleeping on the floor. No. You know what I mean? They don't mind putting a tent out. Anything but spend money. <laughs> now, here's the problem we have with Chris. We got two Chris's now. So I think this for the intern Chris, we can call him original Chris what? or number one Chris. No, I should be original number one Chris. He's well, he's got to have a name. Yes, he could be new Chris. No, Real that's Chris. a ridiculous name. Australian rules, Chris. It's got to be either... Uh, let me just check with Earl, because Earl is like got the wisdom of radio. I mean, he knows that the interns need a nickname. Um, what do you like better, original Chris or number one Chris? I, I kind of like number one. Neither. All right. All right, let's let Vito jump in Okay. and get into it. Vito, and whose side are you on here? DeRosa's? I'm, I'm Team DeRosa. All okay, that. that surprises me. Pete Dominic is, you know, he's flying the Sirius XM flag. I got to do his show once with Opie, and then they never invited me back. All right, so go ahead. I'm uh, Number one Chris or original Chris? I like original Chris, like OC. Okay. You know? OC, OC. So it's up to Vinay. To, oh, let's, God damn it. This is going to be very exciting <laughs> to save it with Vinay, who I kind of want to call original Vinay or number one Vinay. Yeah, Which, there's only one of me, man. Yeah. Now, we... Did you realize how much you sound like Aziz? Oh, yeah. I get that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just the face and the voice. No, it sound. has nothing <laughs> to do with the face. It's definitely the voice. It's the voice? Yeah. Yeah, that little ratty, annoying, like... Brown voice that you I don't want to. I don't want to hurt Aziz's feelings. I know he gets <laughs> sensitive about that. You never fish hooked any girls, did you? What's up? Put the fish hook on them. The claw. Uh, nah, not on the, yeah. No. Oh, you call it the claw? The claw. I call it just fish hook coming from wrestling. All right, you get it, the name your coworker, and it's going to be up to you. Is he original Chris or number one Chris? Your call. Fake Chris. What's that? Fake Chris. No, you got to pick choose? between the two. All right, original Chris. Original Chris. God All right. It. I'm the original Chris. I'm older than him, too, so I would definitely be the original Chris. Dude, the name's already done. Let's not let's not argue it. Just saying, I've been here for a while, and this Chris has just been here two days. Yeah. You could be new Chris if you want. I, no, I've been here forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks like a lot of people are digging the way that... Uh, Original Chris looks. 
Do, do, do. Someone says they hope me and Vito don't make them fat. That's mean. That's kind of fat shaming against me and Vito. I don't know whether we've ever made interns fat. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> That's never been a problem. <laughs> bum, bum. So I guess the original Chris is in tomorrow? Uh, well, uh, intern Chris is in tomorrow. I don't know if it's... Come on, if you got... When we got a name, we all got to... You know what I mean? That's branding. I understand that. The branding has been done. You had your chance to vote. I voted for neither. Yes. And it was 2 one zero. Fuck. You fucked up. You should have picked one of the names. I guess I should have. Yeah. One of the names I don't agree with. Do, 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 do. Um, I think uh, let's plug uh, the Ricky Gervais on Mass one more time. Oh, that's happening. These tickets are blowing up, though. I'm not going to lie to you about it, folks. That's happening next Wednesday, September 26th at 5 p.m. at the Village Underground in New York City. You go to the interrobang.com for a chance at free tickets. Mm. Here I was. I'm looking at some of the stuff on here. I was trying to figure out who Ed is. It's fucking Earl <laughs> Douglas. I'm Re like, Ed? Rectile dysfunction. How come DeRosa didn't do our show? Uh, because he was only here on Monday. And we were doing the Jim Brewer on Mass, which is airing this Friday. Oh, I didn't know that. And Monday he causes all this kind of havoc? Yeah. Well, we're downtown. I guess um, I guess the bonfire's going to get fired, huh? Sounds like it. Yeah. That's the hullabaloo. All right. Is salt bay part of your uh, dish? No, it is not. It is not. You're crazy because that's the story. So little Marco, Marco Rubio, he... And according to the headline, and I know you explained this to me before, doxed, but I forgot what doxed means, but he did, uh, Little Marco was upset with Salt Bay for, not even at his restaurant in Miami, his restaurant in like Turkey or some crazy place, having the Venezuelan um, dictator president there. So Marco Rubio did what? He uh, released information, like personal information, on Salt Bay. So that's what doxing is: releasing people's documents, like either like addresses or social security numbers or phone. Well, he numbers. just gave out the number to his Twitter followers. Gave out the number to the restaurant for them to call and fuck with the restaurant. Yeah, which is quite frankly, he should have said, "I'm doing old school O and A here." <laughs> that is not yours, Marco. It's unbelievable he's picking a beef with a fucking viral video guy. I don't mind him saying I don't like the viral video guy, but when you say here's his phone number and it's a private business, you know, give him a call or whatever. Tell him how you feel. I don't know what he said. But he let on like, hey, we could really plug up this guy's fucking lines. That's not something that we expect out of a U.S. senator. No. Don't know why he's picking this fight. I mean, I get the Venezuelan thing, sure. The guys, I guess the people of Venezuela are starving. Well, guess what? Trump was just fucking hanging around with two goddamn dictators. You know what I mean? He don't say shit about that. No. He's palling around with the guy from North Korea, and he's palling around with Russia. Why wouldn't he go like this? Uh, here's Trump's home number. Go ahead. Tell him how you feel about it. <laughs> Text him. We live in crazy fucking times. Yeah. When the government is shock jocking us. <laughs> Nobody, I mean, everybody is like writing to me, who's sad you want? Pete Dominic. I'm like, Pete Dominic or DeRosa, why do I have to pick a side? That's where we're at now. You always have to have a side. To I don't pick sides. Unless they invite me into the fight from the beginning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that, yeah, that's the time to pick a side. Or if I guess they started doxing each other. <laughs> Well, Dave Davies, I've had Ray Davies on the show a lot of times. So I was Team Ray, but now I got to be like, I'm just Team Davies. I got to get the kinks back together. They are kind of talking about it, too. They're talking about doing a tour. Mm, 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 mm. Was it Ruby or Cruz who had the beef with uh, uh, Alex Jones? Is that Cruz? I think it was Pete Dominic. Oh, wow. Pete Dominic. What's your problem with Alex Jones? You can't even hear him anymore on Spotify. 
Just let it be on InfoWars. He's letting us all know there's a war in information. Mm -mm. This says two dogs, Oklahoma. Benet, what'd you write? I mean, I don't understand. Are there two dogs on the phone right now? No, it's my Indian name, Two Dogs. Okay, what's up, Two Dogs? Hey, uh, I got a new name for Original Chris. How about Aboriginal Chris? I'm not Aboriginal. I'll say this, Two Dogs. Utah, get me two. Two Dogs. <laughs> Every time I fucking see that scene, I get a little hungry. Yeah. Did we ever actually see the sandwich? I don't think we did, um, <laughs> yeah. Aboriginal Chris. Well, I'm just Chris. I'm going to go back to Hicks. Or Pepper. <laughs> Pepper. What about Pepper Slaw? <laughs> mm, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it does. Um, mm. John, Tampa, what's up? Hey, guys. Uh, just wanted to say it's great to hear uh, Thick Dick or Earl Douglas back on the air. Thick Dick and, is uh, back. When I was up at the hard yeah, when I was up at the Hard Rock uh, a couple of years ago, two years ago with my kids, uh, we he gave us one of the best nights ever, asked for Earl Douglas. He was able to actually get us past the line, got good seats, and uh, just wanted to send him into the big big prize closet. He gets plenty of grief, but tops in my book. You so don't get any grief on this show. He gets nothing but our <laughs> respect. Here's what Earl did when I had my uh, niece and nephew up here. He took us out on the marquee. You're the oh, hero man. of heroes, Earl, for that. And he's going to do it again on New Year's Eve. I'm bringing him up. We're going to go on that marquee on New Year's Eve. When the ball drops, there'll be two million people at our feet. <laughs> we'll be able to piss down on them. Oh, that's exciting. I don't think we'll be able to pee on them, though. Just do Earl, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, throw you 25 30 bucks for that. Because I know it's pricey. on. New Have you worked New Year's there? Uh, a couple of times, yes. Yeah. How was it crazy? It's insane because just the security alone, the, just getting into the building is absolutely nutty. Yeah, especially with you. I'm not going to say one of the other shows. I'll just say Nikki Glazer's show. Okay. I was talking to the, their producers. Apparently, they're very big fans of Ronnie B. Very big fans. And, uh, Earl stopped and he was talking to me and then they said to me after Earl left, is that your security? <laughs> I go, first of all, that's the most racist thing I've ever heard. The other, um, when we were at the uh, Vet Black Pussycat, I was standing in the front and the people were walking in, they kept handing me their, uh, their ID cards to get carded. I was like, why are you handing me this? I said, you don't work the door? I'm like, no. Damn. You should have doxed them all. Some, uh, a friend of mine wrote to me, remember when you said people get scared of you and you're just trying to be, you know, be nice to them and sometimes you'll approach people at the Hard Rock and they get scared? They said that you were like Casper. Because remember Casper always wanted to go play with people? Oh, yeah. The friendly ghost. That's you. You're Casper, the friendly goat. Ooh, 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 ooh. You ever watch I haven't seen the new season, but I will say the the review is v very true. Seasons like one and two were like a fun like parody of sitcoms, and then it just got really fucking dark, and it was all about the background of like Bojack's life, kind of like Mad Men. I don't, I don't watch Mad Men. That show is about like sixties advertising. I don't. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I tried to watch it, but I don't like to watch a show where the people don't have cable. I get that. <laughs> I'm like, I can't sit around watching adults on fucking prime time watching the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> but Bojack's, it's a good show. It's it's just... It's, it's a that, cartoon, man. How could be a... It's quality cartoon. What else do you like? Flintstones? Sometimes. Scooby-Doo? When they went to Las Vegas. Rock Vegas. Viva Rock <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> um, But it's... It's just like that weird thing to comedy, like a lot of shows are now, where they're not exactly funny. They're just kind of dark. That sounds like our own Bojack, Chris Stanley. Yeah, Chris Bojack. and Bojack are very similar. How so? He, his family's dead. That's oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Chris. It's okay. I didn't even know they were sick. You both have 
<laughs> the legs of a horse. Listen, I didn't want to bring this up, but Bojack wants to come in and do the show. No way. Yeah, not the voice, just the animator <laughs> drawing pictures of the cartoon. <laughs> Chris, you excited about Dave Davies on uh, Friday? Very excited. Why? You don't even know. How many Kings songs can you mention? Destroyer. Look how deep he jumps in. You are an FM radio listener. <laughs> Paranoia, bang, bang. What about you, Earl? Uh, oh, love the early stuff. All Day and All the Night. Waterloo Sunset is one of the greatest songs ever written. Um Days is an amazing song. All their songs are great, man. Well, they're a fucking great band. David Watts. <laughs> I'd love to see if they want me to join them. Tambourine player. Earl, who would be a celebrity that would make you nervous to meet? For me, it would be Quincy Jones. Quincy. He came in and did. Not only did he do the show, I peed next to Quincy Jones before. It's very exciting. <laughs> He's probably the biggest star I ever peed next to. He was brilliant. Now his daughter's making that documentary. Yeah, it's out, uh, I think it's out Friday on Netflix. They're not touring it? I guess he's older, right? Yeah, they've been bouncing back and forth doing premieres. They did one in Toronto. They did one in L.A. I see. I'm going to see uh, Vito. Who would make you nervous? Somebody who got slimed on fucking Nickelodeon? <laughs> I mean, that would be a big deal to me. <laughs> Seriously. Um, when uh, It would be Ric Flair for me. I don't think I could meet. Ric Flair. It's just I've known him my entire life. I've seen him my entire life. And I've met wrestlers that weren't as big as him. We're offering you every fucking celebrity on the planet. It's Ric Flair. It's actually, you know what? He above, just got married the other day. Yeah, The Undertaker was there, double fisted whiskey. Well, you know what? Let's not judge people on what they do. You know what I mean? No, I'm judging A him. guy wants to fucking drink or whatever. What are you fucking typing up? A uh, pad data. Oh, uh, oh, nobody types it up in there? Here's the thing about Chris Stanley. I was discussing them with him. He's still doing all the jobs. Yeah, he shouldn't be doing pad data. That's That should be Earl doing that right now. So I jump in a little faster. <clears throat> what happened when you tried to put those things together? I was supposed to do this week. They were all over the place. Yeah, it fell apart. So before the show, I was going to tape some stuff for the Big Emmy weekend, right? He's sweating up a storm. He can't get everything going. I'll go, Chris, you got people to do this. I fucking looked at the things that he want me to voice over and they were so crazily written and there was sweat stain. I'm like, you're trying to do everything and you're fucking up. You were supposed to be the leader of the pack. Yes. Who would you like to follow? Because you don't like to run the pack. So you should be in the pack. You can follow Earl or Vito. I'd, One of them is going to be EP. I would follow neither of them. I would like them to follow me. Yeah, but you don't even give them work. You're in. It's impossible for you to share work. But you are a good blue collar guy. You will do what you are told, right? So you get the choice right now, Vito or Earl. Neither. I'm not picking either of them. This is why you're in the trouble that you're in. Okay, you got to pick one. This goes right back to the Chris name. You're not playing the bit. You're not rolling with the bit. Who do you follow? <sighs> Fine, then I'll follow Earl. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Earl's his boss. <laughs> Earl's your fucking boss, Chris. Again. Why don't you go get him lunch today? <laughs> Fuck that shit. Earl taught you everything you needed to know in this business. Uh, yeah, he was uh, he was there originally. We didn't get along all that well. You don't get then. along with anybody <laughs> until they leave. Then you're best friends with them and in their wedding. How do you not get along with Earl? I mean, we had that one issue with the spoiler, but I get along with Earl just fine. I never had a beef with Chris. Never. Earl's one of the best fucking people who's ever lived. What were you fighting with him about back in the day? I can't remember, but I do remember screaming at Earl multiple times on the air. Racism? I, it wasn't racist. It felt racist that, to me. Did it? Particularly one of the letters of one of the words. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking wish Ian would look into him and know exactly what he is and maybe plan a hit on Chris. I'm going to I'm gonna pull this clip. I'm going to send it to Ian right after the show, and I'm going to tell him we're going to be next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Wait, where did he steal a laptop? How's he able to listen? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you're bringing up the Gervais thing are you telling me that you're more nervous to meet fucking Ric Flair than you would be Ricky Gervais the man who created the office not for just his country and this country but that thing played in 74 different languages uh, next Wednesday 5pm at the Village Underground in New York City Ricky Gervais is going to be there I don't even think I'm going to be able to go up to him 
I have no problem with you not being able to go. I don't up to think him. there was a plan for me to go up to him and do anything with him one on one. No, you're the uh, you're in charge of the grab Vinay for me too, would you? Now I want to ask you if this is okay. Yeah. Uh, from your purpose of run- Vinay's a runner. I didn't even know that. Yeah. That so, was very quick, Vinay. That's yes, good. Uh, good form. It's the fastest now, intern we've had in a while. I never deal with the interns one-on-one. But I'm just uh, pointing out something that I found to be amusing yesterday. And Vito missed it. So his first day interning, Joe List is here. You yeah. get to say something to Joe List. And then he goes like this. Joe, how would you like to do my club? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny to you, Vito? He's doing it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know he is. That's probably keep... Keep the businesses separate. The fact that he's saying probably and can't be a boss is why you'll should, never move ahead. I don't think it's really appropriate to be going up to guests of the show. He doesn't think. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the kind too. of a guy. You asked him first? What? You asked him first? Though? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, no, go I was never. There was no. never a conversation. Uh, I would here's, never... What I, here's what, no. <laughs> the fact that you just played it like that is why. Yeah, I am I in to... trouble? Huh? Am no, I in trouble? You're fucking fine. It's <laughs> Vito. I'll just say this. Vito, you're suspended for the next six weeks. How long is your internship, Benai? Six weeks. Okay, perfect. The next six weeks, you are suspended. Chris? Yes. Your favorite thing, you get the double duty now. <laughs> uh, you do, You can be the producer who has to work with no one. Okay. Uh, well, then I'll yeah, make sorry, do. Bro. Make do? We, we just talked about how you don't share work. He doesn't know how to go with a bit. Uh, what time is this gig? October 10th, 7th to 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and plug away. <laughs> See if you can get Pete Dominic and Joe DeRosa <laughs> in the same show. I was looking for Ricky. I was. <laughs> Go ahead. Right up. I mean, fucking <laughs> Vito has no idea. Maybe you get Gervais to drop in. Um, hey, so uh, sad, Joey. <laughs> Joey New Rochelle. Ronnie, did you eat lunch yet? No, I have it. I'm fucking starving, too. I, I got a um, place you should check out. Have you been to Shorty's yet? Yeah, I have. Style. Oh, I, you know, I went yesterday. It was a little ham and eggerish for me, I thought. But man, what a good goddamn cheesecake. I actually went back today, got the pork, provolone, broccoli rob. Yeah. Send those interns down there. Get some sandwiches for the crew. Let's go. Well, um, here's the thing Vito does not like to run the crew. Uh, and. We sent Vinay out yesterday because I got fucking soaked. And Chris told him to get some socks. He comes back with these little ankle socks like a fucking sixth grade girl would be wearing. <laughs> Why I, sat on the, I, I sat on the train. My fucking pants went up a little bit. And the lady goes like this. Are you wearing little girl socks right now? I asked if a men's it. crew socks were okay. This is, I don't know what a fucking men's crew socks. That's sock on is. you, dude. I yeah. I, te- I called you and I said that. You didn't call me. You I texted, texted yeah. I said sure because I thought a fucking crew sock is a sock no. that's like a no. Of sock. course it isn't. It think, isn't. Think about a crew neck shirt. Think about crew neck. Think it means short. It means low hanging. What? Is that what it means? Yeah. yeah. Low hanging. Mm, mm, crew. Mm, mm, Come on, Chris. Mm, 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 mm. High socks. <laughs> You like the pic of you that went up on Instagram? Yeah. You think it, uh... It, I got some fans. Do you really? Yeah, I got this. What's with the Fonzie? Double thumbs up. <laughs> I don't know. What's I don't know like, what hey, to hey, <laughs> hey. I don't know. I felt like, like, original Chris had, like, a charm to him. <laughs> he does, man. And I was trying to build up my own charm. I'm going to tell you right now, original Chris comes across like a young uh, reboot of a Mel Gibson. You know what I mean? Huh. Like if we ever really, <laughs> reboot, yeah. If we wanted to reboot Mel Gibson, we go with him. I don't know, Vinay. You just there's something about you that looks hesitant. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're like not sure about well, yourself. For sure, I don't know how. How to do you smile. do with women? Do you do okay with? Oh, women? I do great with women. Good. It's because I don't smile with women. You know, right. they like that mystery. You don't have to smile. I thought it was a photo and like. Yeah, but people don't smile. In it. Like you never see Abraham Lincoln smiling in any photos. <laughs> He's fucking stoic as shit, man. You can't be smiling if you're th- worried about slaves. You know what I mean? <laughs> They'd be like, "What the fuck is he smiling about right now?" <laughs> There's slaves going on. All right, I'm Vito. I'm going to take the interns off you. As not so much that 
you know, some of these mistakes have been happening, but the fact that you are out of control, you know what I mean? What, what, how am I out of control? Did you just hear, would you just start laughing over the... I, I was just shocked. There was a laugh of shock that... You had already known about it, though. No, I didn't know about it. I wasn't in here when that happened. Chris, did he know? He did not know about it as far oh, as okay. He backing you up. I've never I seen was him. Not, I've it, never seen Chris go for the fucking, you know, follow the bit until it was time to not follow the bit. Earl, don't fucking be confused over there. Put some phone stuff up. They're coming in one after another. What's he trying to do? The thing that you were covering for him, Chris? I don't cover for Vito. Dude, I'm talking to Earl right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Want to see the baby playing with a rattle at fucking two months old? Look at that. You'd never see a baby playing with a, a big fucking rattle at that age. Joe Montana did not pick up a rattle till three and a half months old. Really? Yeah. And then he really just fucking threw it to the back. I mean, most of his <laughs> passes were six, seven yards. Um, a hey, uh, Nate, Nate, Minnesota. Yeah. Hey, I hate to give Chris any credit, but uh, crew socks are a calf height saw. Well, why wouldn't he even go and look it up? Why wasn't he fucking... Well, that's what he does. Yeah. I mean, he's looking up everything else. That's what I thought. We were no, look at these. That's what he fucking gave me. Little baby doll socks. Yeah, I know. I was fucking shocked. <laughs> shocked or you wanted me to dance for you? I, did <laughs> I don't want you to dance for me. Chris Why, told me he you loves your ankles. Dancing? Look, I am, I'm very proud of my ankles. I've never turned an ankle in my life. I'm very proud of that. I do it constantly. Yeah. As drunk as I've been, many pills as I've taken, my ankles have stayed strong. But now, you take drugs? Nah. It's really fucking fun, man. You gotta try it. Does weed count? No, weed doesn't count. Weed doesn't count. count. Ankle now. That's yeah. like saying, oh yeah, I have a bike. It has training wheels on it. <laughs> I'm afraid of that stuff. Don't be afraid. No one has ever overdosed. <laughs> Stats check out. You don't want to go through life. Tim it. You're a fucking comic. Look at Lenny Bruce. You know? You could be the next Lenny Bruce. Which head are you emceeing that show or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm hosting and then I yeah. do like 10 minutes. Yeah? Then I bring you do up 10 minutes comments. strong. Will you work the room? Yeah, I work the room. I work the room Chum with Chris. A little bit. Let's see you work the room with Vito if he's just fucking sitting there looking like that. Right now? Yeah. Hey, cutie, where are you from? Manhattan. Manhattan? <laughs> yeah, from New York City. You're born in New York? Woo, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, woo. Oh, yeah? And what this. part of the city? Upper West Side, woo. Oh, damn, and now uh, you work, you, you commute, you bike, you come. Yeah, commute. Oh, I, I ride crazy. my city bike everywhere. Woo. Damn, I Why listen to- Why are you going woo like that? Sometimes people right here, let me, <laughs> Woo. Let me uh, fucking work the room with him. Hey, what's your name, man? Vito. Vito, let me ask you a question. Did you just eat the couple that you came in with? <laughs> <laughs> Chop them off at the fucking knees. <laughs> <laughs> now get out, Vito. Fuck. This is my room. I just booked Joe List. Get the fuck out. <laughs> and I'd throw a drink out. You take your fucking drink with you. <laughs> I like to go hardcore in these fucking. Um... Kyle in Boston. Kyle. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Uh, there's a video on bostonglobe.com uh, right now. These two townies, the Boston, Cha uh, Boston Red Sox Eastern Conference Championship banner fell off a truck, and they found it on the highway, and they're holding it hostage for uh, tickets and stuff. It's, it's like Baby Whale 2.0. It's fucking hilarious. All right, let me say this. Um, you can't find it, Chris? I'm going to bostonglobe.com. I mean, Vito, what I would love to do is get you on the thing because Chris is just a disaster. And I've realized it's because he didn't grow up with a computer. I did. He grew up with a fucking abacus, <laughs> and now he's trying to move over. <laughs> Kyle, what's the name of it? Uh, just look up uh, Boston Red Sox banner. It should pop right up. They just posted it a couple hours ago. There we go. Hmm. All right, let's take a look at this. Give us a little audio, would you, Chris? That's just recapping the game. That's not the actual video. All right, that's the banner. Now look at those nice socks that you could fucking. <laughs> so we don't have the two guys holding it at all. 
Uh, on the Boston Globe Trump. website, they have just the. What do you? He went to Yahoo. We were just reading the box score of the game from yeah. yesterday. Turn up the volume. Now we have our coffee. We're on. We're driving on McGrath Highway in Somerville, and I noticed a couple cars swinging, like oh, moving God. to the right, and we Fucking seen something dog. in the street. And he's like, Louie, what is that? What is it? I'm like, I don't know. I don't. What is it? So I ran across the highway to grab it. We brought it in the car. We had no idea what it was. Yeah, Boston. It was wrapped up in a, a brown paper bag. Number one, Boston. First thing I said, this belongs to the Red Sox. This yeah. is for Fenway the Red Park. Sox. Yeah. Like, like how do we have this? Like, nobody made this. This belongs to the park. I'm thinking that they hang it off the green monster. Yeah. <laughs> We want to give it back to them because it belongs to them, and it yeah. doesn't belong to us. Yeah. But in in reciprocation, we would like you know maybe to go yeah. to a nice playoff yeah. game, or yes. we were yeah. looking for something. We just don't want to hand it over to them. Right? I no, mean, no, no. we need to negotiate here. We want. Yeah. To, we're looking for Listen, like you know. We're we, working too. Yeah. Yeah, we're I mean, working too. Two grams of coke, you know. <laughs> fucking case of beer. <laughs> These guys are fucking hilarious. First of all, they're showing their own house. <laughs> the fucking feds can be there in five minutes. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's My see man had to run across to three Bolton. lanes. Traffic. But we know that that's the original one. We were told there was only one made. Yeah, we were told there was only one so band made. At that point, that tells us. But that then fucking banner is 135 bucks, dude. Look <laughs> <laughs> it. So if they do try to put a duplicate up. You yep. best believe we're gonna show up and say we have the right one. That's not the yep. right, that's not the original. This fucking so master plan is idiotic. <laughs> we're hoping that they don't make one and they and they put the right one up. We're hoping they do the right thing. Yep. You know, we did the right thing. We could have kept it. What? We could have put it on it's eBay. A fucking we could, you know, we got connections where we could have reached out to other sources. We're reached big supporters. Out to one other <laughs> Uh, and we want to see them win, and we want this banner to go back on Lansdowne Street or wherever it belongs. These are the two biggest fucking dopes of all time. This should be a movie. <laughs> Kyle, I could never thank you enough for bringing that to our attention. Thanks, buddy. Right, peace. <laughs> I don't know how two people sound so homophobic, but look so gay. <laughs> That's Boston. There's a bunch, <laughs> a bunch of homophobic <laughs> gay guys. <laughs> fucking Noma. <laughs> Tom fucking Brady knows exactly how much I would suck his cock. Um, that was the best thing I ever fucking saw in my life. They think they have something of value. Yeah. They have a fucking banner. That was on the side of the road. That's how important it was. Just, to who, that's how important it was. It, to fell off a, it fell off a truck, Chris. I mean, this can happen when you're moving merchandise. <laughs> it's just a manufactured banner. And it has like no connection to the team until it. If it hung up in the stadium, it's one thing. But until it makes it into the stadium, it doesn't mean anything. Even then, if someone said, "Hey, they replaced the championship banner," you wouldn't be like, "What the fuck? That's tradition." <laughs> we think they're going to hang it off the monster. <laughs> Now, we could have went and traded it for some lobsters, but we didn't. <laughs> We're fucking true to the Red Sox, but we got to wet our beaks a little bit, too. <laughs> Hilarious. Look at that fucking guy's head looks like a, uh, a green. <laughs> <laughs> they both had their ears pierced. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't they? That's what I was saying. Well, what so. are you talking about? People don't pierce their ears anymore? I I didn't think these two, these two dudes had their ears pierced. What fucking year you think this is? 1978. It means something if you pierce your ear. Earl's got his ears pierced, and the head of his cock. Would you get your Prince Edward, Earl? I got my Prince Edward. It hurts too much. You guys ever seen a Prince Edward before? I don't think I have. It's this thing right in your fucking dick hole. Oh. My intern, like then, in shock jug days, the intern had to get it done. And uh, <laughs> he had this, I didn't know this, he had to sit the piss because his dick was suddenly like a sprinkler. Like oh, everything, sh like he wasn't shooting forward, all the piss was coming out sideways. Wait, wait, wait what, what did they do to your dick? They put a, a, a thing. A it's catheter? Like a, no, it's a piece of metal, like a ring, goes through the head of your cock. 
and uh, right through the pit. Where are you going, Earl? Squirming. You're going to get one of these. No, I'm not. Get two. Here's how come he had to get it. He had a boxing match, and the genitorturers were like the judges or whatever, and whoever lo lost the boxing match had to get this pierced through the Heather cock. And the second that the match was over, we did it right there in the middle of the ring. <laughs> and it was a fucking breakfast show, and people were running out. They were like people running and screaming like the blob suddenly showed up. <sighs> so you and original Chris are going to have a boxing match. Okay. Loser gets a Prince Edward. Get well, Put a Prince Edward and get a, a, a thing of it. I think it's Prince Prince Albert. Prince Albert, you're right. Albert. Thank you. Why would you know that? Huh? Why would you fucking I don't know, know man. that? I, just, I know these things. Because Prince Ed Edward was the. Uh, oh. Yeah. oh. Yeah. Fuck. I remember. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> uh, that's. All right, hold on. Garth. Thank yeah, you. I don't know why they're afraid to correct you. It's a Prince Albert, he not a Prince Edward. got around to it, but I'm going to send you in the pretty good prize closet for. Hey! Prince Edward was the, I think, the old tobacco or something. Yeah, that sounds familiar. But pr I remember Prince Albert because season one, Jersey Shore, Jay Wow stuck her hand down Paulie D's pants, and then she mentioned that he had a Prince Albert. <laughs> I'm very, I was very fucking surprised about that. This is the first time I'm hearing that story. <laughs> yeah, it was season one, Jersey Shore, <laughs> original season. <laughs> you think Big Brother be back next year or? The ratings are too strong. It's three original hours of programming a week. You think Chen will be back next year? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think Julie Chen will be, I think she'll be back. It no seems, way. The, see, it's like the reports no say way. CBS wants to keep her and she wants to stay. And it's one hour of work a week for her. Because I don't think she comes by for like the veto stuff. Or She doesn't fucking even watch the show that she's no. on. <laughs> Hold on. Scott wants to tell you about a Prince Albert. Scott, what's happening, buddy? Hey, guys. I've got my Prince Albert done. It's a, it's a six gauge. And yeah, you spray pee everywhere, but if you give it a little twist while you're holding, it's not too bad. And if you don't care where you're peeing, then stand up and go. But now, Scott, what do you, why would you get this? What do you get out of this? Prolonged directions and more powerful orgasm. Really? All right, Vinay, yeah. you're going to have a more powerful <laughs> orgasm because we're going to run a fish hook through. <laughs> and you look at it. It'll spray from, everywhere. Yeah, it'll spray in every yeah, which direction. Knows. Actually, if you're wearing a condom, it'll probably just shred it. You know what <laughs> <Yeah>. I mean? <laughs> it does. But you, how long have you had it, Scott? Uh, there was six of us. We decided to go get them one night. That would have been in 2003. Wow. So you <laughs> kept it a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You ever get together with the other I Albert would boys? Highly, <laughs> I would highly recommend it to anybody. <laughs> My right, new man. nickname is, is Scotty Squats to pee, but. Yeah, I guess you would. I guess you're going to fucking squat. At my house, I do. Everywhere else, I don't care. Yeah, you don't care. You're at a fucking urinal on some fucking, yeah, what do you care? All right, gotcha. <laughs> and you're thinking about getting one, too? You and Vinay the same day? Yeah, you know, just, I feel like that guy went with his five friends, yeah, so gotta, I can yeah. go with my interns. I think the, gr <laughs> the great thing about it, too, is you have a place to put your house keys now. Oh, yeah. I always, I mean, you're never going to lose them. I'm always losing them. Yeah, you just take your fucking dick out when you're opening the door. Hold on, it'll just be a second. I can hang my badge from there with a little zip cord. All right, it's enough. Girls well, like we piercings. Were, yeah, girls are crazy about it. piercings, yeah. You can get your nipples done, you fucking nuts, cross your ass, you I, know? I do uh, nuts over nipples. Nipples, I feel like with, <laughs> with man boobs, nipples. Nuts over nipples is the way I think about your whole fucking <laughs> sex life. Wait, could you get the piercing if you're circumcised or uncircumcised? Yeah. But you uncircumcised? Yeah, of course. What do you mean, of course? It's a fucking rare thing. We're in America. Yeah, but I don't know. Do I look like I get my... I'm not Jewish. Yeah, nobody that's Jewish got All Christians get it, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Damn, I don't know that much about yeah. it. Cough. Sounds like you haven't sucked a lot of dick in there. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you need to get out there a little more. <laughs> Yeah, it's a rare thing to run across a Christian who's uncircumcised. I remember, like, in my school, we just had this one, my first grade, we just had this one long fucking um, urinal that all the boys would pee together at the same time. It was like a trough. And then somebody said, uh, this one kid, uh, like, 
what the fuck is up with your dick? And everybody was gathered around looking at his dick. And the teacher was like, what are you guys up? You know, can't be fucking doing this. Really, we never saw a dick that looked like this. It's fucking amazing to us. This girl I know said uh, first time she witnessed one, she got freaked out because she had never seen one before. And just Someone what? An right. uncircumcised penis yeah. and ran out. Do you ever run into girls that are surprised? No, they like the extra yeah. hood. They like that, like, coding. Well, here's the thing. But it all pulls back during sex anyway, right? Yeah. Now, extra sensitivity. Um, that's the weird thing. Like, I was, always felt like I couldn't get more sensitive. Yeah. But I even read. They say the sensitivity is through the fucking roof. That's why uh, uncircumcised this guy can only last about 18 seconds before he starts coming. Because he's so amazingly sensitive. Now... Did you see what uh, Stormy Daniels said about Trump? No. Yeah. So she said that the head of his dick, <laughs> she goes, his, she said, first of all, she said, his dick is small, but not freakishly small. Okay. But the head of his cock is like a mushroom cap, the fucking. From Mario. Tell, yeah, that's right. Like you could fucking get under it in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> now, my feeling is I think she made it up. But now she's got people thinking about his weird dick, and like <laughs> he's got to think about. Yeah, why she say it was like a toad coming at her? I don't know because she said the head was just so much larger than the shaft. Yeah, but why is that like a toad? It's because of his big uh, toad hat. <laughs> Go to the story instead of fucking pictures of Mario Kart. <laughs> Are people saying? No, she said in the book that it looks like Toad from Mario Kart. Okay. She quoted it. I didn't think she was a big Mario Kart player. <laughs> yeah. Go to uh, USA Today, Chris. Like a fucking... So the late night guys are already doing shit about it. You want to find the joke. You want to keep find moving. It. You find it. <laughs> Nintendo tweeting. For once, I'm going to say, let's not take a closer look. All right, they're all into it. Even Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon said, that's why in uh, the new Mario Kart, um, Toad collects coins and uses them as hush money. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's just bullshitting to make people fucking, you know what I mean? It's not like he's going to go, God damn it. Look at this. You can fucking see I have an average size cockhead. Did she add legitimacy by saying it's not freakishly small? I give because I feel like if if it's just it's obviously fake if you're like it's the fucking small. Well, remember thing. they said all this shit about Hitler's dick too. Yeah, that, like it was, people were saying it was that it was very small, and then his piss hole was down at the base. Right, and at the end. He had one ball too, I think. Yeah, of course he had one fucking ball. So because of that, he was so fucking mad, he just invaded Poland. <laughs> now the thing is he did never have kids. No. What are you doing? Just changing the TV. The what? I was putting I was on a Was there something bad on there you won't don't want me to say? No, no. It was uh I don't even know what to call it. A screensaver. Okay. Um, hey, Chris, Chris in Indiana. Well, let me try again. Chris, go ahead, buddy. Hey, yeah. Ronnie B. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, it's not a toad. It's a toad stool. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, just like you said, when you're gathering around the trough, everybody's looking at it like, what the fuck is wrong with your dick? You didn't know that it was fairly rare. No, I mean, I thought, like, everyone, Just, like, I thought it was a minority to have your, the top of your dick cut off. Here's what I want you to do. Walk around and ask your friends. Are you circ say circumcised or not? Cut? Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I think Earl is uncircumcised, aren't you, Earl? Yes, I am. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, boy. From the day that you jacked off with that fucking porn star. What was her name? Brie Olsen. Oh, yeah, Brie Olsen. Brie Olsen came in when we were doing the show before. And was, uh, I think she was like giving you a lap dance and shit, right? Um, he titty fucked her. It yeah. was, it was on the L&A show. Yeah. And then Earl jizzed all over the place. You yeah. couldn't help yourself, you yeah, said. It, it just happened. She is beautiful. She was one of the angels, Charlie Sheen's angels. She yeah, I know. The original. Well, they were goddesses. Yeah, he's right. Uh, yeah, Corey yeah, Feldman right. was the angels. That's right. 
<laughs> Nobody jacked off on Crowley, Clay Feldman's people. Uh, Danny in Jersey. Yeah, I got a nickname for uh, Vinetti. What's that? Peeler. Peeler. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. And this is got uh, instead of the Prince Albert, um, we're going to get your, your circumcised. Yeah? Yeah, let your family know. It's all going to be taken care of. That's exciting. And then after that, the Prince Albert. <laughs> um, it's a busy day. Hold on, Jason. What's up, buddy? Yeah, uh, I was just telling him about um, how I just got circumcised, and I was telling him how, like two years ago. Yeah. And the difference between the feeling is uh, it, it was the worst decision I've ever made. Like I should have never done it. It's no, much why did better. You do it? I don't know. Kept getting I, infections from not clean, keeping it clean? Because you got to keep it extra clean. You got to shower twice a day. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 everything was good, but it was just this girl that I was with, um, and she mentioned it. She so I just went ahead it. and got it done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, girls, they look at this the same way we want them to shave their vaginas, just because we've seen it enough. But here's the yeah. thing. I, I'm, I'm having this idea right now. I mean, this is something I could take to Shark Tank. All right, you know the flashlight, right? Yeah. What if we just yeah. fucking fill it with like dishwashing liquid, and twice a day you just sit there and pump that thing <laughs> over your That's uncircumcised crazy. penis? Yeah. You don't have to take a full shower. <laughs> Let's face it; it ain't about your armpits or the back of your neck. I think Mark Cuban will love that. I'm sure he will. I'll come in wearing it. <laughs> I go. I don't know about you guys. I'm feeling fresh as a fucking daisy right now. <laughs> And he'll go like this, I'm circumcised, and for that matter, <laughs> for that reason and that reason only, I'm out. <coughs> What's the old lady's name on there? That nobody, No one ever fucking picks Barbara. No, she's... Although, I think more people pick Barbara than that other fucking Canadian. Herkajavec? Herjavec. Yeah. And then now there's fucking GoPro guy that shows up every now and then. I thought he dropped out. I haven't seen any of the new ones. I'm only watching CNBC. Yeah. I just it's on like it's on like Sunday through Thursday. Like just here's what I do. Here's what I do. I just watch it and I'll go like this. I'll just fucking look up in the laptop. I'll go. So how did this thing make out? <laughs> but you know what they uh, they all had a chance for was uh, that fucking ring thing that we saw. Oh, Ring.com. Yeah, they all turned it down. And it became a billion dollar company. It would have been the biggest and best investment anyone made. And they all spent all this time telling Ring. What is it? Why they were wrong. It's like you've telling your phone who's ringing your doorbell. You can go like this. Get the fuck away from my door. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Right, people are asking um, if they can get new pics of the interns. Just comparing their penises with each other. <laughs> and that is a mighty yes. We gonna do it now? I don't think Joe Liss is circumcised, though. Somebody look into that. Okay. Text them and ask him. <laughs> hey, Joe. He's doing your show. Who else has done your show? Anybody else has done our... That's come in here? You know, Remy Casimir? Mm -hmm. Claire Parker. She's on Nikki's show. <laughs> That's all I could think I of. I love the name Claire know. Parker, though. Yeah. It's a simple name. It's a great name. It's like a fucking, you can see that becoming a star. A movie star name, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you're going to that new Claire Parker movie? Oh, I can't. I'm having a Prince Albert done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing the whole fucking thing out. Uh, you go to the New York uh, Film Festival and all? I've never went. It's right in your neighborhood. Hey, is our guest here? Uh, yes, they just signed in. I was I was literally just looking to give you a note. As long as I've known you, yeah. Why wouldn't you just say to me instead of writing down a note? Our guest is here. Our guest, our special guest for dishes here. Oh yes, let's change it to special guest. It's <laughs> another comic you can try to get to him. <laughs> you think you're gonna have the biggest fucking show in town? Thanks to the <laughs> fucking Vito. Is he wetting his fucking beak on this? I'm not getting any of the profits. You're getting apps. You fucking, want it? You're getting ten percent no, of the I apps. I don't want any money from this, dude. Don't <laughs> incriminate just, me with this. It does seem like you're fucking shaking this kid down. I didn't know anything about this until I was told on the air, and that's why I had a shock. What you say is Little Italy? What? Oh, your your gig is in Little Italy? No, Bleecker Street. Oh, no. Bleecker Street. Oh, they're never gonna let you in the cellar. Never. You're one of those people doing fucking things close to them. 
I'm a hack. I'm just for being close to them. Yeah, man. Because they <laughs> know that you go. You guys are going up and grabbing people off the lines. I guess so. Yeah. You got the wrong tattoo. You better fucking just change that to an uncircumcised penis. <laughs> All right, we're going to break. Back with dish. Hey, what do you think of Vinay? Killing it, huh? Doing very well. Killing it. Bennington. Let's dish. Put on your headphones. Vito's got the news. Let's dish. To the gossip they're saying on the radio. This week's Dish segment is presented by Dish. Get extra action with NFL Red Zone from NFL Network on Dish at no extra charge. Dish, tuned in to you. To learn more, call 1-844-CALL-DISH or go to dish.com. Can I just give you just a yeah. little bit? Of, when you're doing a plug, don't be angry. <laughs> don't sound like you're angry at the product. It's a wonderful product. <laughs> I was so focused on saying dish right. Last week, I said like dish or like something, and I didn't want that yeah. to happen. But I don't want anybody to think the man selling this product is going to hurt us. You no, know, I love dish. Love Just get dish. Call one 844 <laughs> That's a little better. Call you you sound like less threatening than one eight four four. Just call up. Yeah. Get more information. You know what's funny? I don't know what's going on with you, but you look like the meme of like a kitty cat guy. It looks like all right. Like you know how you go on Snapchat and the girls are putting oh, like yeah. the, that's what you look like and right with your hair. Like, do you want me to go like? No, I don't want to be. You know, I don't want that. Well, our special dish guest. Uh, oh easy, boy, man. easy, buddy. Our special dish guest for today is Anthony Devito. Mm. Oh. Oh, Thank you so much for having me on Dish. It's and great it, to see you, and I know that you have your nights free now, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Th <laughs> things are uh, <laughs> things are back to normal. <laughs> well, last night I hadn't uh, seen you for a long time. You're like, oh man, I've been writing so much. Good. And God. then you go, I don't know what they're going to do with the show. I go, they're definitely picking up that show. <laughs> I go, it gets so much press, and it does. Yeah. I'm stunned. Mm hmm. I don't know. I mean, I the main thing that seems to have happened is that uh Netflix's business model being uh you know, finding things organically or what it is just doesn't cater to a super topical show. It is interesting, so isn't it? That was really the issue because it was like, yeah, hey, it was a good show. You're right. It got a ton of press. People watched it, people liked it, but um it just the numbers I think uh, ultimately weren't there for it. But you know, they you are right that it's not People don't go there and go, what's new? Right. You know, I mean, I remember when Ari did the double special thing, and it was like six months later, right. got to stand, and people start going bat shit. They're just like, yeah! And <laughs> just like, one night, like six months, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why do people know you? And he's like, I did those specials six months ago. <laughs> that was really interesting. We were watching it pick up all the time. And now people are stopping him on the fucking street. <laughs> like aren't you are you and he can't say no who else looks like him <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's dish it up well first i want to say anthony's album dream occupation Good. is available now on all streaming platforms the dream home. <laughs> that was great Vito. non-threatening yes. not dismissive <laughs> Just a great album is out now <laughs> <laughs> all right so cat williams uh -huh. Oh boy, what uh -huh. kind of troubles Cat in? My Cat favorite feline. Yeah. <laughs> Cat Williams went on this Atlanta radio show, uh -huh. Frank and Wanda in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love Frank. I'm not sure about Wanda. Yeah, that's how never Cat cared acted. for Wanda. Yeah. Cat went on. He insulted a uh, Lil Rel, Kevin Hart, Gerard sure. Carmichael. Uh, by the way, you book Cat on your show. That's what he does. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's a great point. Who's surprised? No, Wanda apparently. Well, Wanda, <laughs> Wanda got annoyed because Cat actually started to attack her towards the end of the uh, interview. <laughs> yeah. I love that idea. You know when like you're just out of uh, whatever, so you just look around the room, yeah, yeah, and that's just, what you do. Fuck like, guy. And I hate Wanda too. <laughs> I will say this: Cat Williams coming out of jail, explaining himself to TMZ, <laughs> is better than 99 percent of the specials <laughs> that get released on Netflix. <laughs> he's so funny. Yeah, he's great. Did did you watch the last special on yeah. Netflix? Unbelievable. Yeah. The f opening with <laughs> just women with briefcases, yeah. which is never explained or yeah. revisited later. And then uh, the nine minutes on Jacksonville. The local like Jacksonville uh, comedy was uh, perfect. <laughs> what you would yeah. do playing <laughs> yeah. 
playing a road club <laughs> right. just to survive out right, there. Right. He puts on a special. That was unbelievable. Yeah, he was and great. I thought it was great, too, is that, like, uh, it, <laughs> like that's what made it to air. So that's like, yeah. there's a half hour <laughs> right. of Jacksonville material where he's just into the like, oranges are different in Jacksonville. <laughs> they're juicier. Well, in the interview on this radio show early on, they're like, Cat, like you've had so many specials. Tell us like you're, you're so great at putting them on. And he goes, it's all about quantity. <laughs> <laughs> certainly and then he's quantity like, over quality. Exactly. He's like, I've made six more specials than Richard Pryor. I've done this many more. And he's not talking about how Pryor good they Pryor only are. made two. Yeah. Right. That's what everyone's like, oh, Pryor was the best. And you're like, Burr has already made 18 more specials than Pryor. And Cat has a yeah. 105. Yeah. <laughs> One of them just done in a pool store where he was <laughs> returning things. I'll tell you what's different about this pool store than other ones. Hold on, I'm going to fight this child over here. <laughs> so Cat uh, insulted Wanda's looks, her mm -hmm. outfit, her jewelry, <laughs> sure. and her cooking skills. All Cooking right. skills. That's one I wouldn't have saw coming. Yeah. Her husband got so upset that uh, apparently outside of an Atlanta club the next night, uh -huh. he chased Cat Williams down with a gun. Police reports sure. said. Oh, boy. <laughs> Cat says there was never any gun involved. And this guy, the husband, says he didn't threaten him with a gun. His gun just happened to fall out while he was chasing him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is in Atlanta? This is in Atlanta, yeah. Mm. I don't, I just don't, I mean, I never met. Cat Williams, uh, I'm, he seems like a fiery guy, let's say that, uh, you know, but I don't know that you need a gun. To be uh, cat? To go, yeah. You gotta be a good shot to hit cat, there's yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. So he's fast, and he's little, <laughs> but this whole reason is why, like, when I'm down there in, in Atlanta, and people go, you wanna go to a club, and I'm like, nope. I'd rather stay right here in Buckhead. <laughs> I'm not leaving Buckhead. <laughs> it's comfortable here. <laughs> All right, Jameis Winston, the Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Yeah. Who may never get his job back. May never get his job back. Chris tried to ruin the story for Dish earlier, but I'm telling it to you now. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Winston allegedly grabbed an Uber driver's crotch during March of 2016. Male or female? Uh, female. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been such a better story. Yeah. <laughs> he was suspended for three games, but now she's suing him for $75,000 in damages. Just give it to her, man. 75, yeah. 75 isn't that much. 75 75 is is a I'd, be, drop in the bucket. I'd be glad to hear 75 if I'm him. Just do it. It's barely like what, what I go, she... If she called me and said, I go, I'm reaching my hand through the phone. <laughs> We're shaking it. This is a deal. A deal. Yeah. And then I'd fucking give her 80. Go, Here's five grand. <laughs> Stop by your mom's house. Give her something. <laughs> It's funny to go from like a villain to a saint with yeah, just that yeah. bonus. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, he's a good guy. He's you know, he's thinking of everybody. Extra. Uh, Uber's got to be pretty excited. I mean, this is the first like uh, the time they they yeah. went the assholes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, didn't Jameis Winston was at college? Yeah. Where yeah. he like stood on like a chair in the cafeteria and was yeah. like, "I'll rape everybody in this room." Or uh, yeah. Something crazy. Yelled, I think he yelled out "fucker" right in the pussy. And that then that um, right. that's the place we fuck in this league. It's the SEC. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is, he was allegedly raped another person, and. Got caught stealing crab legs from a market. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, to me, the worst out of all. Yeah. If you're the crab leg, like, market people, yeah. like, you also have to throw your hat in the ring, but it's so much less, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. They're just, just like, like yeah, also... and that's not all, everybody. <laughs> he did pick a pound of shrimp from us, so. <laughs> now, here's the thing. While he's out, two of the games, this guy's thrown eight touchdowns. Eight. Yeah. While he's on the fucking bench. He might not get back into this. I don't think he does. I mean, he was, but, but like the the Bucks knew what they were getting into when they drafted. The yeah, guy. I mean, he was. He's a problem in college. He was a problem in college. They were. It was either him or Mar Mariota that was. But how many this, strikes right? before he's out? You know what be, I mean, this should be hit. This is if the fucking Fitzpatrick is doing. As I mean, good people as he's are getting right in now. trouble yeah. for saying stuff. Yeah, and he's actually right. doing <laughs> right, shit. Right. And then they also sent him out because when they did. Um, that fucking, what do they call their preseason show? Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks. He's in front of kids the whole time. Like, hey, kids, you gotta want, you know, and then he goes out and fucking grabs some his pussy. <laughs> he's not the president. He's a fucking quarterback. <laughs> right. He's the Bucks quarterback, yeah. too. It's not, yeah. a, it's not a high profile job. <laughs> They're the undefeated Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. What, when a team goes 2 0, what percentage of the chance they got of going to the playoffs, Chris? 75%. Vito? 68. 62%. Vito is the winner. 
Wow. Um, Chris, thank you for playing. <laughs> you have to leave now. Get out. Um, we're Seriously? Take, <laughs> yeah, we're taking all the money off your board. <laughs> <laughs> so the Emmy guy who proposed at the Emmys, uh, oh, director sure. Glenn Weiss, uh -huh. he, got, he won for directing the Oscars, proposes right. to his longtime girlfriend. Uh, turns out his two daughters mm -hmm. are pissed because they had no idea this They wanted to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> Twist. <laughs> They're 17 to 21 years old. They said they were watching the awards and that's how they found out he was getting engaged. And uh, his ex-wife uh -huh. is actually in the business and she's annoyed about it too. It doesn't matter what business she's in. Yeah. So the daughters are upset because they wanted to be there. I think just they more wanted to know. They wanted. They just a heads wanted up. a heads up. Now I was wondering, uh, did he? Do you think he had anything like any prior knowledge of who, that he was going to win because he directed the Oscar? So he has to know some people. No, I don't think he had any knowledge. He just brought the ring, and if it came up, it right. came up. I thought it was an inside job. Uh, there, there's no out of all the things to go to in the story. <laughs> that was the dumb one. The thing one is, should he have t told his daughters first? Or is this his life? That's the story. And I say, you got to tell the kids first. Daddy's <laughs> going to fucking do this. Because I know yeah. the fucking check note was coming. You know what I mean? Right. And I thought it was so hack. And then all the other celebrities acting like, yay. Crying. I mean, yeah, they're jumping up and down. Like, I can't believe we're here for the. I fucking hate when someone wants to make things yeah. public. And then you had to hear about it for the rest of the night in constant jokes. Where people would come up and say, oh, I, I promised my wife I wouldn't propose after yeah, I won a, this. That's a nightmare on all fronts. It's, it's just, it's horrible. I agree with you. I yeah. think it's just like a hack move to make this like a, a public thing. It's a, yeah, Everybody has thing. to do everything in public now. Right. You know, it's at a fucking ball game. I boo every time somebody fucking pulls that <laughs> off at a ball game. I'm like, don't do it, honey. I've only seen it once where I was like, I'm fine. It was, <laughs> I saw a proposal once in medieval times. That was the only time where I'm like, yeah. I think this is appropriate. Yeah. I, I, it's that would a, be fine with a me. Festive so. atmosphere. I saw it at a Phillies game and uh, it just seemed really inappropriate. Because the guy was wearing his sunglasses on the back of his head. That's, you know, that's, the, <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool in Philly. But yeah. I felt like for, yeah. for the proposal, you should take off the sunglasses off the You back. know what? Don't tell other people how to dress. Okay? <laughs> I mean, it's a fucking me too much. Everybody has a way to express themselves. If we got to be okay with trans people marrying other trans people, the guy with the fucking, he's fine. I am so sick of guys bringing up males fucking fashion. Because I don't even notice. And yet they're like, oh, he's got a bun in the back of his hair. Oh, he's got... Shut the fuck up. The whole reason <laughs> of being a guy is no one cares how you look. Yeah, I don't... Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't want that happening to us. That's, no. Someone's horrible. If someone puts on weight, so what? <laughs> don't sit around and wonder who's cut and not. Thank you, We're Ron. not women. Vito, I, if you ate a whole ham right now, I would just say there's more ham. You should be worried. I mean, you should be worried about my health, not just my. <laughs> I don't I'll say. Can I tell if Vito you eats a whole ham, we gotta call somebody. I'm gonna tell you something right now, Vito. I say a lot of older fat people. I think you're fine. I think this is a myth. A myth. Everybody likes to say I'll die before sixty, but there are fucking old fatties. That's. Plenty of them. Yeah. I see fat guys on those little fucking scooters and shit. What are they doing? They're putting more fucking food right in that scooter basket, in that rascal basket. Yeah, they're going from deli yeah. to deli. You eat as much as you want. You're gonna at forty. You're gonna feel elderly. That's the beauty. That's the nice. He's gonna feel like you've lived a long life. There's a lot of people write to me that they're worrying about your breathing on the air. Really? Yeah, that you're doing a lot of <laughs> you gasping. They go. You sound, said you sound like a fish out of water. I didn't realize that. I'm going to keep that in mind now. Uh, you know, I was talking to uh, on the Big Brothers podcast. I was talking to the casting agent about how that was my biggest fear about getting on the show. Being fat. <laughs> the breathing. That's one thing, but that Walk the mics on you at all times, <laughs> and that you would just be listening at the live feeds and you're like. <laughs> you think they're going to cast you next year? I, I'd like to think, but I don't know if they're going to have a new casting department. They've never had a guy your size on the show. They've never had a fat guy. The last fat guy was Cornbread on the online season. That guy was <laughs> fucking <laughs> terrible. That's not the other guy you want to be lumped in with is a guy named Cornbread. I don't know. It makes me feel better about my chances of anything. I'm not. I'm fat, but I'm not Cornbread fat. <laughs> i never seen this Cornbread, but I assume a guy whose nickname is Food is fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was in the Redneck Olympics. All right. So... Donald Trump. Uh, oh boy, here we go. Uh, our hero. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, he released a video on Tuesday to thank the first responders for helping 
Hurricane Florence. Mm. And uh, the way he described it was uh, Chris play the video. Incredible men and women who have done such a great job in helping with Florence. This is a tough hurricane. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint <laughs> of water. Rarely have we had an experience like it. And it certainly is not good. But the people of North Carolina, here's, here's South Carolina. With this. If it's live, that one thing. Oh, this is God. fucking fake. Yeah, this is the best they got. Somebody's going to say, sir, I think that we should do this again. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what he's going through. My guys will never go, no, could you recut that promo? You were off. They never tell me. They uh, never tell me. Like, that was plenty good. They just want the bare minimum. And that's what this man is going through. This is not live. Yeah. It, this, no one should have seen him saying that it's the wettest water. Yeah. You think they were like, well, this is the first one he's done without yeah. saying Oriental for no right. reason. So let's just go with this one. There are tariffs against the Orientals. <laughs> <laughs> from, I love the standpoint. I yeah. the first I've seen this. The standpoint of water is a yeah. great from water's perspective. The weirdest thing is this isn't the first time he's done this. They've made fun of him before for just being amazed by the water <laughs> and it being wet. The wetness of the water. Unbelievable. He doesn't like a script. I wouldn't either. He doesn't like going out there with no with like the professionals giving. No, him because that's work. That's something you have to do. Right. It's difficult. That's why he started fucking. He went to Russia and started licking a dictator's face because he did not know what else to do. <laughs> My next dish. Oh, oh boy! Man, first, good. I want to say Anthony DeVito's album "Dream Occupation." Dream occupation. Dream out your <laughs> dreams come true. It's available now on all streaming platforms. I'm gonna get it. You should. It's on mm -hmm. Apple Music. Oh, well, look at me! <laughs> okay, I'm already. I got the new iPhone. Oh, wow. New for me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see like that thing you could tell if you're having a heart attack? They'll let you know. If you have a brain aneurysm, your fucking watch will let you know. And if you fall and you're not moving after you fall, they'll just call fucking 911 for you. I don't like that. What if I just want to take a nap somewhere? Like on you, the ground? You hit the <laughs> like a nap on you the ground? Just, Is that what you said? If you let <laughs> like, Yeah, Trump. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> right. Let's say I got a couple. I just wanted to sit down for a while. <laughs> it sounds nap? like you could have hit your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say immediately. I They should, for that comment alone, yeah. I think you should, they should call. Right now, they check to see if you're getting enough oxygen to your brain the way yeah. you're talking. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What was it about? So, TJ Miller shows sure. up to an open mic in Colorado. Mm, uh -huh. Good for him. He's getting yeah. gigs. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this club's uh, thing is anybody who shows up and signs up can get on stage. Uh huh. But the two. Well, are you sure even movie stars that had a hit fucking TV show? Oh, anybody, right. Okay, good. <laughs> but these two hosts of the show uh, decided instead of telling him that they didn't want him to go out, they would just make him feel uncomfortable and hope he would leave on his own. So they made jokes about him slapping an Uber driver, uh, his bomb threats, and uh, just brought all of this up on stage and then even introduced another comic is give it up for your a comic you won't be hearing about in Jezebel. And uh -huh. they did that mm. until he kind of just left on his own and didn't go up. Mm. Yeah. That, I mean, just don't have him. Why go through all that? I, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand. Well, he just, I think he just showed up. He wasn't late in Yeah, but you can yeah, say, you can sorry, say, TJ, yeah. we can't get you up tonight. Yeah, and yeah. they're... they're. Do you see what the seller's going through right now? You see what Noam is getting calls <laughs> right. at his house? Yeah. It's not me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their reasoning was uh, that they think comedians have an unspoken contract to be honest with their material and grounded in truth. What are they talking about? They think that they're honest? They're, they're, they're two guys that takes to host an open mic. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't uh, I don't see that as being honest. <laughs> no, they're saying that TJ needs to be honest and not lie about what he's done. And, How do they uh, know what he's done? No one knows what he's done. Yeah, yeah, they didn't do any. They had no interest in hearing if he did it or not. Any take on his side? Right. They just were like, they don't want him there. Oh. Get out. Well, like I always say, the mob rules. You know yeah. that makes me happy. I'm with the mob. And did, the mob's doing. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Didn't he get in trouble? Wasn't there a big thing at another Denver comedy club that he tried to perform? I at? don't know. You're running the segment, so. 
<laughs> you should come in with that information. I think I'm just remembering now. I think we heard it in the panel we went to at JFL. <laughs> Absolutely not. Don't blame it on the panel. No, I'm not blaming it on the panel. But I think there was another. Uh, you think. I th- You're I, running this segment. I'm You've running this know. segment, and I'm just telling you something. I'm just, I might have remembered. This might be Vinay running this next week, the new comedian that we you have, the fresh new comedian. If you have him in here, every comedian you come in, he's going to try to get them to come to his shows. <laughs> have you met Vinay yet? I haven't yet. No, okay. Yeah, we'd be I'm excited know. to do his uh, one nighter at the VFW <laughs> in Hackensack, though. You'll uh, be co headlining with Joe List. <laughs> They've been open Wednesday at 7 yeah. p.m. <laughs> Now, I'm going to tell you about this Real Housewives. Okay. Going on right Absolutely ahead. not. I it's... love how you introduced what you're about to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This, this, uh, so I know it's about to happen. This New Jersey housewife, people are pissed at her online because of a uh, photo of her daughter for her birthday where her stomach's out and she's wearing a ton of makeup. It's uh, How old is the daughter? Daughter's pretty young. I'd say around like 10 to 12 years old. I don't old. know if this is something we should even have on our computer then. <laughs> Look up... Uh, Look up Teresa, Chris. Teresa, I can't. Isn't it on the iBang? Uh, no, this one I wrote up right as I came in here, so I did not. Send it is it up in. on the iBang. Oh, it is. Oh, I did send it in. So I'm she's in. Here. Oh, she's in trouble because her daughter has her stomach out. She says her daughter has her stomach out, and she's wearing too much makeup. Well, that's none of our business. Yeah, but the internet people online are freaking out over it they it's think a it's belly enough. button what are we amish <laughs> if she went to the beach she would be wearing less than this well now people get in trouble for putting their kids in like bathing like bikini bathing really too young yeah people get pissed over that oh because everything's on social media exactly uh-huh because people post it online and then like everybody like sharing family uh, why don't everybody let everybody run the, uh, raise their own kids yeah, people but, I mean, you have to be following this to know. <laughs> unless this, unless the mob brought this up, you wouldn't have thought this was appropriate. I don't even know who the mom is. She's the one but that, that just looks like a little girl and a fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What does she have to wear? Long dresses? I, <laughs> right. I, like I, I went right. to, I was in eighth grade or whatever, like not too long ago, and that's not that what? much different. <laughs> You're in eighth grade. <laughs> what happened, Jethro uh, Bodine? You get held back a couple years. Look, I was in eighth grade like ten years ago. Okay, <laughs> all right. And um, not too long. First of all, there's not a lot of nine years olds in fucking eighth grade. Yeah, I was roaming well, the you, halls. Oh, uh, yes, it's oh but a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> What's your point, Vito? But like, when I you was, like lasagna? Is that it? I love lasagna, but girls were wearing that shit when I was that age. I don't see the fucking yeah. And then this is in Jersey too, right? Right. Yeah. So I mean, this isn't a lot of makeup. No, that's I a don't. jersey none. Yeah. That's, I'm uh, telling you, guess, unless no you told me that kid was wearing makeup, I wouldn't know. I don't know what, uh, you know what I mean? What age do you let somebody wear makeup? Uh, what's the big deal about makeup? It's, <laughs> I Who don't, cares I, if I've a heard, kid's wearing makeup? I've heard people get pissed over ears getting pierced, but I thought people got baby's ears the, pierced. None of this fucking, these aren't our kids. <laughs> this is this lady's kid. <laughs> right. What am I going right. to go over and tell her what to do with the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. her family? That's what How people, they should dress? That's what people are trying to do on Twitter what right now. People? <laughs> the what people? The internet. Man, this poor kid. You know, she's just being a kid. She's, Who cares? she's just being a kid. And she's with dealing her with mom. the backlash. Right. She's got people like me coming out here and telling you about her fucking outfits. Let me tell you something. <laughs> her mom's very hot. Yeah, she's the yeah. one that went to jail. For what? Make put makeup on her kid. <laughs> yeah, they locked her up for that. <laughs> uh, no one, you know, uh, no one is supposed to be deciding what somebody else's children are wearing. What are we going to yell at this person's mom for not fixing her teeth? <laughs> it's not her fucking business. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I would not even have thought anything it unless you brought it up. It doesn't look like... You should have said, what do you think is wrong with this picture? <laughs> and seen if we could have guessed. I thought they were going to fat shame the kid. I thought that was... Oh, wrong. Jesus. wow. Oh, let's on, say dude. the internet, not Jeez. me. That is not a fat girl. What do you want I, her to do? Before, throw up? Before I saw Take the a picture, nap I, on the ground. Uh, <laughs> with your, don't wear your iPhone watch. <laughs> Dude, why would you think that's an overweight girl? I'm just, I just because fucking people get fat shaped all the time. They fat shaped me when you I was a little kid. You were well, girl. Chris, you were fat. I mean, you were fat. She's fat, not fat. We seen pictures of you. You were fucking you were, <laughs> bullshit. I wasn't fat. You were eighties fat. 
<laughs> I wasn't fat, all right? I just had some fucking, I don't know, I was I had a little meat on me, but I wasn't a fat child. <laughs> That's 80s fat. Are you, you saying you compare yourself to this kid's weight? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. zero body fat. You had 72% body fat. Yeah. I would love to bring up a picture of Chris Stanley at this age. I right, find your picture yeah, when will. you were a kid. I will. Well, don't get me wrong. He was a really cool kid. There's no doubt about it, but, you know, he was husky. I wouldn't even say husky. What's below husky? Fat. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking far back are you going here, Chris? Are we getting a time? There was Chris. Look, look I I'm much, mean, look I'm much there. No, than those are those girl. are fat jowls. And by the way, Vinay, come in here. Not all the way in here. Just go over by Earl. Vinay. Nah, whatever. He's okay. <laughs> He's gone now. Oh, stop him. I mean, That's you look, okay. You look cool. Yeah, and, yeah, and no, a wide shirt, the really shades. Cool shirt. You know, yeah, people didn't know he was undercover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look yeah. when he started putting two thumbs up. That's Chris Stanley when yeah. he was a little kid. And now you try to steal his fucking two thumbs up act. Watch yourself, and I. That's a lot more <laughs> swagger than I had. Yeah, yeah that's that right. Is. Yeah, that's right. I don't yeah. have that swag. Yeah, look at that shirt and those short shorts and the hats. Yeah, yeah. what happened to you, Stanley? You look great in this. Picture. Yeah, you look great. He, he I, still wears the same sunglasses. They're on his head right now. Yeah, Put true. your sunglasses down. <laughs> now, true. if you just had a cool shirt and a fucking trucker hat, what's, it, yeah. what's the hat say anyway? It says, kick some shell. It's a Teenage Mutant <laughs> Ninja Turtles. Uh, yeah, hat. you weren't really, I mean, maybe a little chubby, but that's yeah. it. Much thinner than that little girl. I Well, I wouldn't say much thinner than that little no, girl. His, he, look at his fucking chin and his jowls. That's yeah. not a skinny kid. Yeah. That's, a, that's a malnourished child. This was the this, the day that this picture uh, was the day that he was raped by an <laughs> older man in the neighborhood. <laughs> and they, yeah. they, they're saying, are you okay? Yeah. And he put up the two All thumbs right. like, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's how cool he was. It's funny. His, uh, his taste of... Uh, Childhood, the taste always brings back is Butterfingers and cum. Whenever he, <laughs> he thinks of that, he's going, oh, I remember being a kid. Those were good times. And he just goes, do you guys remember that flavor? <laughs> yes. I was like, that never, no, that wasn't really? a flavor. Yeah. He's like, are you sure? I yeah. love it. Mm. What is it, Vito? You're fucking dead air. Well, I know, I have some more dish for you just guys. Just do it. Great, man. Okay. Just so do it. Don't we're, fucking we're, stop everything. more children news? But I, I want no. you to be... Take the pictures down of the kids. We got wide open fucking windows here. <laughs> but now you got to be ready. You might be running this segment next week. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is my dish right here. And then you're going to fucking love this. Well, first, why don't, right. we, why don't we plug? Anthony DeVito's album, Dream Occupation, is available now on all streaming platforms. And he'll be co-hosting with Joe List, this <laughs> new thing Vinay is running. That's the good, I mean, hopefully. Yeah. I was waiting until after the show to ask. Where, where oh. are you at? You're two doors down from the fucking cellar, grabbing people off the I'm line? four big-ass <laughs> blocks away from the cellar. <laughs> If SD sees him oh, walking man. into your room, that's it. You're going to be shot on the spot. You're going to be wearing a fucking sandwich board. Fuck the seller. Come on down here. It's only $2. Go ahead, Vito. All right. Kelly Clarkson has oh, a new... Oh, boy. Here okay. we go. Kelly Clarkson. Fat shaming time, no, huh, Chris? <laughs> She's enjoying her Chris, life. Chris, behave yourself. <laughs> She's a big girl. She looks like Chris on his way out of a rape in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> so Kelly Clarkson gets her, uh, getting yes, a new NBC daytime talk show. Show. Oh, okay. Boy. The only issue, she's getting the Ellen Ellen uh, lead in, which is a huge deal. Uh -huh. Why? Steve, who has it now? Steve Harvey had it till now for seven years, and she I didn't took, even know he was on daytime TV. Yeah, he had. A, he had. A, he's, he's got a seven seven, seven no. seasons. He's in. on the fucking Steve Harvey channel. <laughs> yeah. Twenty four hours of him. It is bananas. Yeah. Seven seasons in, no idea what's happened to Steve Harvey, but she's taking his time slot. What is she going to do? Sing every day? These fucking <laughs> daytime shows don't work. Yeah. She's, when singers do it. She's going to be just talking to people about, you know, giving away prizes, probably. Yeah. She'll be like this. You think I can eat an entire turkey? Well, I'm going to fucking show you I can. I, I went to The View as a kid. I to bet be you did as a kid. Eighth grade? I, as eighth, actually, in eighth grade, I fucking loved The View. I used to record it every day. Uh -huh. And I was really excited about mom let me take off school one day to go see The View. And I was furious because oh, that was the one day they didn't give shit away on the show. What did you want them to give you, ham? That would be nice. <laughs> 
<laughs> How crazy would that be on the view? <laughs> they give everybody like prizes. This, this, this. They take one look at Vito and they go, "Well, we got a ham for this yeah. guy." <laughs> You're right. Know what you um, want, big boy? Who were the guests on the view when you were there? I don't. I don't remember. Steve Harvey. <laughs> Problem. <laughs> Wait, Vito, you would tape the view every day. I'd tape the view and I oh, watch it when I got home. I love that. And now you're hosting the dish. <laughs> it's my one step away from Why the did view. you? What did you love so much about the view that you would tape it every day? I don't know. I think it was just all these women's uh, takes on today's hot. When issues. you were watching, wow. were you putting lipstick on your fucking nipples and <laughs> fucking p- making sure your dog didn't fall in the pit? Yeah, I was wearing my mom's heels. I <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> it's a fu- it was a fucking great show. It was the. The uh, <laughs> it was you, Barbara Walters. It was the Barbara Walters oh, years. That's right. Star okay. Jones years. Uh, Star Jones. All right. This is when you started taking fat girls fucking skin off their back. <laughs> <laughs> is she a great big fat person? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to Star Jones? Is she Steve Harvey now? Is that what happened? <laughs> That's how he's able to do so much. Yeah. I remember he the- became Star Jones as well. He engulfed her. The last time like we saw from her, she was like doing some verbose segment on a football field, oh, and I think she got like fucking on, hit. Dude. She come got on. hit in the face. Stop oh, it! Oh man, wow. Was that there- was Booger McFarland. <laughs> 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 All right. What? I just want to tell you. You can't have more. fucking dead air in this business. I son. wanted to tell you more. You got to keep moving. I just want to tell you some more dish. Now, yes, then so- d- 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 do that. <laughs> you don't tell people. I want to tell you more. You just <laughs> Vito, tell them. Vito's such a nice guy. <laughs> He's got to learn how to, you know. Oh, He's got to be a broadcaster. Yeah, it's so funny. All right, Kanye West. Says he's moving back to Chicago and he's never leaving again. He well, what said, about his wife and kid? I have no idea what's happened with them because she has a show that she does in L.A. that <laughs> seems pretty L.A. based. I don't sure. think you could do it from Chicago. Well, they've done it all over the world, haven't they? The Kardashians? They did. I remember uh, Cl- Courtney and Chloe take New York. That was like a spinoff that uh-huh. wasn't like in New York. Right. But- I mean, so you're saying that you could never do that show from Chicago? You can't do Keeping Up with the Car. But they're not on every day, right? They shoot Once for a, a couple week, months. Yeah. But they shoot a couple months and then they're off 10 months, right? Yeah. But he's not that big a part of the show. Like, it's mostly her, and then, like, you might hear right. about him one time or, like, see something. So to go to Chicago, like, a big part of the show is, like, the LA lifestyle. Who cares? I, people who watch that show, eight. people fucking love that what, show. What about the LA lifestyle? Do you watch the show? I've seen episodes. Why can't it be the Chicago lifestyle? Like, hey, I brought back some fucking dogs. Look at this. It's like a salad, but there's a hot dog in the middle of it. You know what I mean? Look how thick this pizza is. Honey, it's as thick as your ass. I don't think the Chicago fans would go for I mean, the Kardashian fans would go for the Chicago style. Why wouldn't they? I don't know. That would be great. The whole new cast. This is a Polish (laughs) contractor. (laughs) (laughs) The club scene. I mean, that would be amazing. The club scene just doesn't live up. The, The restaurant scene, I don't think lives up when's the last time kim's been in a club she's fucking got yeah. three kids now she goes she does like club appearances and she like shows up at restaurants a lot Do you know how much money she has she's fucking she's loaded. not doing gigs Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's not like, oh, yeah. I got to go over and yeah. fucking host a, a fucking bathing suit contest. Yeah. I thought you were still doing those. She's like a like a billion dollars. Yeah. Every one of them has a billion. Yeah, wasn't the, the one, one girl? Yeah, yeah. Kylie or whatever Kylie. is like a billionaire or something yeah. like that. Well, for makeup line. Billionaire. Right. Yeah. And their and their dad is a is a woman now. So everything is changing all the time. On the yeah, man. When you're that rich, location <laughs> yes. you don't even notice. Well, where why you does are. he want to move there? What is going on with him that he's lost his LA privileges? He uh, he wants to bring. He wants to like help out his hometown. He's from Chicago. Uh, he's he announced it at an event with Chance the Rapper, another right. popular. They're actually collaborating on a new album. But he wants to move back to Chicago just for the neighborhood. It's a marketing scheme. I don't even think him and Kim are that together anyway. You think it's a front? I'm thinking the the one thing the Kardashians do is crush guys. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he's keeping his distance. He I as like as a Kanye fan, I think he he's gotten much happier and normal since getting with them. Even he had like, a mental breakdown. Yeah, but even he had that, to cancel a tour. Even that mental breakdown. He's running around with a MAGA hat on. Even <laughs> the only black guy in America <laughs> with a MAGA hat that's on. Crazier than ever. But that's no, that's you're wrong. That's nothing compared to like the once it, when his mom died, yeah. he really went through a fucking uh mental breakdown and that was much worse than it is now. Like now he's just fucking he likes Trump because he has dragon energy. 
That's what he said. Well, that, that, that whole sound, thing, that was a publicity stunt. Because he didn't even have an Everything album. Everything he does is a publicity yeah. stunt. Well, this too, because he's been neglecting Chicago for about six years. This is home, and he didn't go back for ages. Most of us don't go home once you fucking move. You become an adult. For (laughs) hip hop, it's a big deal. You got to try to book him, man. (laughs) Yeah, for my show. (laughs) You want to do my bar show? (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) don't let Esty know, but Anthony DeVito is here. Uh, he's a host in SNL. Who's he? Uh, music, Anthony? Kanye West oh, is the musical guest. <laughs> no, but Anthony... <laughs> he's not I'm hosting. He's the... Musical he's, guest. Yeah. Well, host you just is said, Adam you Driver. said hosting. I would have... I'd rather see him host. I think that would be <laughs> that fascinating. That would be fucking fun. Yeah, yeah. Him in sketches, just not on <laughs> script at all. Yeah. It would be great. He's not showing up to every dress rehearsal. With <laughs> no, man. That monologue writings. is out of this world. That yeah, monologue is the whole is. show. It's just yeah. the entire... He doesn't stop. Uh, and people say an album's gonna drop after the, what people uh, well he announced an album coming out that weekend so people think uh the album will drop right after snl it's going to be a follow-up to Jesus. Mm. a follow-up to Jesus. yeah it's going to be called yandi Gandhi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, that's> <laughs> and he great. said he's doing watch the throne too with jay-z they're friends again. is he going to give uh-huh. out candy to everybody like here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anthony devito's album dream occupation is yeah. available now and it's still? streaming on all platforms it's still available okay, it's still good. streaming <laughs> you can buy it you can stream it i use apple music and he's doing oh, a bar great. show um, <laughs> yeah, be at an elks lodge yeah. in piscataway <laughs> at 6 30 it's um, not a joke <laughs> uh, basketball. Are you proud of that show, though? You feel like it's going well. Yeah, good. It's good, good man. It's good, man. Thanks, guys. Yeah, what is it? You know, basketball player Matt Barnes says before every game, you he's just played. yelled basketball and sat there for a while <laughs> because I, <laughs> basketball player Matt Barnes <laughs> said uh, every single game since high school he smokes weed, even into the NBA. Yeah, I mean, have you ever seen Matt Barnes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's denying that? Absolutely. Uh, Matt Barnes was the he was the one who Derek Fisher yeah. was fucking his wife, right? Mm-hmm. And Knicks fans Jeez. did the most brutal. <laughs> that was really. Nick, 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 I'd be high too then. Knicks fans did the most brutal thing. He comes to the game. Uh, he's playing. He's playing at MSG, and every single Knicks fan just starts chanting Derek Fisher. At him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he should have yelled back. You guys haven't even been to the playoffs since fucking two thousand four. Yeah. Yeah. When's the last time they were in the playoffs? Uh, what was it? It was it was the Mellow and Amari years, mm-hmm. right? It was like what two thousand. Yeah, I mean, you're going on like 2010, 2012. Yeah, at least like six years, something like that. Yeah, it was. It was feels like forever. But yeah. it was. I think they were always a one and done. It was just one round, barely any hope. They usually played the Heat in the first round and yeah. lost. I'm telling you, they'd be right now if they just said, "Walt, come on out, stop fucking calling the games, come in and run this fucking show." Well, uh, Jimmy Butler just told the Timberwolves that he wants a trade. So and there's yeah. a, as he has a list of one of three teams. Nobody knows what the list is, mm-hmm. but early in the season, people thought the Knicks were going to trade for Jimmy Butler. I think uh, the Knicks are on that list. I can't wait until the New York Post puts up the Butler did it, <laughs> 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 thinking that they're fucking high fiving each other. Yeah, say yeah, say what you want about them. The day Ike Turner died, <laughs> yeah, and Ike beats Tina to death is always hilarious. Oh, that's really great. It's always great. <laughs> Ike beats. Tina to death. <laughs> and you know they're just sitting around all night going, what the fuck? I'm going to need something. Ike, I like Mike. Ike and Mike. Wait a minute. Uh, well, I don't I don't want him to... I don't, don't want, want to, Jimmy Butler uh, Not right now. Not for a trade because you're going to have to trade team play. You're going to have to tra- trade uh, prospects. Earl wants to yeah, come the three, in with a- The three teams that he prefers are, according to ESPN, the Nets, the Clippers, and the Knicks. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to give up franchise pieces. He's a free agent at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to go for him now. Just wait until the off season. Yeah, the Knicks have a good young core. I really wouldn't give up. Uh, you don't want to give up Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox, or uh, yeah. KP wait. especially. Hold on, is this Sam Morell's old fucking uh, MSG? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to put my people talking sports hat on again. Uh, is that yeah. show still going on? No, that's mm. long gone. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, they're still playing reruns of it. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. gym and bar in New yeah. York. <laughs> People, no one's ever heard the show. Everyone's seen it, but nobody's ever listened to it. It's really fucking hilarious. There was an episode I saw one night where it was uh, you guys with Chris Jericho and you brought Greg Stone in. Oh, my God. And I was just really Jericho. excited for you and Greg Stone oh. to be on there with uh, Jericho. <laughs> How do you handle himself? We were excited, too. Greg, Greg seemed really fucking pumped up. He, about didn't, it. Uh, he didn't say anything like, I love you. 
purpose, Jericho. <laughs> no, he didn't get a chance. Jericho talked the whole time. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. he's got his fucking Bozzy Zazzy band, <laughs> yeah, Fozzy Bozzy. Bear. <laughs> this the was the fuck. Dude, so we had Greg on. Greg's so excited. You know, we couldn't get him. Uh, Greg doesn't know yeah. anything about sports. So it's like, finally, Greg loves wrestling. Have, you know, him on for Jericho. The minute we start, uh, Sam goes, all right, this is what we're going to talk about. And Jericho goes, yeah, I don't do topics, bro. And uh, we were like, well, we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, I don't do topics, bro. Yeah. Whatever comes into my head. I'll yeah. start talking about my, I'm mad at my aunt, everybody. Yeah. Well, this is a sports oh, show. Gosh. Here's the thing. This proves that wrestling is not a sport because Greg Stone likes it. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a sport, he'd be like, I, I don't know what they do out there. I don't know any of the rules. Earl, you look like you have more in breaking news, like you were so excited with the other stuff. No, I was just staying no, there. That was great. <laughs> I didn't have that I didn't have that tip, but I do know another little uh, hot story just came in on my phone, so I didn't send this link in. First of all, great segue. <laughs> okay, Space know. Jam 2 is happening. Yeah. LeBron James is going to star in it, and Ryan cool. Coogler, who directed Black Panther and Creed, is going to be making it. <laughs> okay. All right. So this might be an art house <laughs> Space Jam <Yeah>. movie. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Did you guys the I guess the origins of Space Jam is that uh Kim Jong Il, Kim Jong Un's dad, yeah. wanted to kidnap Michael Jordan yeah. and have him play in North Korea for the rest of his so life. So Danny DeVito's character is based <laughs> on Kim yeah. Jong. Il. Yeah. yeah. They then, fucking love Michael Jordan over there. Uh -huh. Love him. Yeah, I mean, like they'll just sit around and start talking about him. You know who's a good basketball player? Michael Jordan. I was like, yeah, I know. You've been saying it every day. So that's why they like Dennis Rodman so much. They just bring him over. And they're well, like, I mean, we all, I mean, that was, he was yeah. on the team. Yeah. And you know what? He was a real good fucking position. I'm like, you know, he wasn't shooting. He was like, I know what I'm supposed to do. That whole, fucking rebounds. That whole team just doesn't. Everybody just talks about Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. But like they had their big three. They had they had Pippen, they had Jordan, and they had fucking Scotty, uh, uh, Dennis Rodman. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And with the as soon as fucking Jordan left. They had nothing. No, was, and they came back, oh, three more championships. So, yeah, there's no... Why don't you bring up Luke Longley to everybody right now, too? <laughs> since you kind of look like him. You got to dress like Luke Longley for Halloween. Just, bull, just bulls, uh, tear away pants. I'm going to tell you something right now. Your dishes are just... You're covering the spectrum. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we got you know sports. I mean? We, we got, got music. sports. We got yeah, it's like the fake you know. paper. We got You're like little... the top of the bit. I'm a, I can't wait till you get to the obits <laughs> <laughs> and then a crossword. You have a crossword. This is uh, this is my last dish of the day. Ever? No, not ever. Say it, ain't so yeah. Last dish of the day, okay. and it's some Tom Arnold dish. Oh, oh. God, dead. <laughs> no, not that. Did he beat Roseanne to death? <laughs> this is not the obituary <laughs> section. Uh, Tom Ro uh, Tom Arnold. Tom Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, yes, you you know? said Tom yeah. Rhodes. Oh, no. Funny man, Tom Rhodes. <laughs> uh, you know. How would that happen? <laughs> How the fuck would that happen, Vito? Vito gets so flustered in, introducing at these. At JFL, I spent 10 minutes telling Anthony oh, about how... Uh, about at the state of the industry address that yeah. that fucking Chris Gethard was just getting it. Oh yeah, he <laughs> from, keeps going on and on and on about the railing against Chris Gethard, and I'm like, wow, I mean Why? that is surprising. Yeah. And then yeah, at the end of it, and I'm like, did you mean Chris Hardwick? And he's like, Hardwick, that's who it was. I was, I was like, yeah, I was gonna say, man, I'm so glad that's... you haven't said it to Gethard. Oh he'd god, be, he'd be crushed. No, I would, I would not say that to Chris Gethard. I'll say, man, I had a great time at jail. Well, I just hung out with Vito and Stanley the whole night. Whoa. People must have been like, I mean, I don't yeah. know what's going on with DeVito. With, These are his new friends. Yeah. I'm worried about him. Well, those are the guys that you know are going to come back with sliders. Look, yeah. I got a whole <laughs> fucking tray full of sliders. So at a pre-Emmy party, uh, Tom, Tom Arnold. Rhodes. Tom Arnold, not Tom, Tom Rhodes. Tom Morello. <laughs> oh, Tom Arnold from Roseanne fame. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mark Burnett were walking into a pre-Emmy party where they got into a physical fight, not just That's, a verbal. Yeah. Oh, okay. I could say fight. Now, what were they fighting about? Well, Tom says that Mark tried to choke him. Why? It just just uh, for no reason. <laughs> the guy who produces Survivor ran yeah. at a guy who was on TV in the nineties and started to choke him. Tom yeah. Arnold a says choke is an intimate <laughs> thing. You don't just do yeah. that for no he reason. He says there's video of it. Uh, people say that Mark tried to choke him, but Burnett says all he did was push back. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then why? I don't know why they just got into this. I it guarantee over... you, if I look up this now, I'll be able to tell you because they. <laughs> They, the journalists, go out of their way to find out why. It was over <laughs> Trump. 
What about Trump? I forgot to write that down. That's okay. And this is your last story. I just this is my last story, and I didn't write career. down. <laughs> Tom Rhodes was choked. It, Tom Rhodes was a, a verbal mistake by me. I did not bring me to bring up Tom Rhodes. He's just so, always on my mind. So wait, Mark Burnett choked Tom Arnold. For, he and, says he just pushed back. Tom says he choked him, and then um, Tom tweeted that Burnett went ape shit, then ran away with a torn shirt and a missing crucifix. <laughs> a missing crucifix. What a weird detail. Yeah, I mean, he's you just got to have it on you. Um, <laughs> you didn't have big. I'm gonna say that for you. I, I fucked up by not having the Sorry, reason that man. they fought over Trump. Well, and, you just had one extra story to need. What is it, Chris? Our guests are here. So that's what I want you to say. Not here's your thing. Let's wrap up with Anthony DeVito now. Anthony's album Dream Occupation is available now on all streaming platforms. And this week's Di Dish segment is presented by Dish. Get extra action with NFL Red Zone from NFL Network on Dish at no extra charge. Dish, tuned in to you. To learn more, call 1-844-CALL-DISH or go to dish.com. <laughs> Don't laugh during your... Dish.com. Mm-hmm. Called Dish. That's dead air again. <laughs> Did you thank Anthony thank DeVito you, for Anthony being for on? Thank you, Anthony, for coming in. Uh, of course, man. Yeah. I love you guys. And thank you, you guys for being part of Dish. You're going to plug for him, right? Uh, and Anthony's album, Dream Occupation, is available now on all streaming platforms. Thanks, Vito. So you great to great see job. you, buddy. Yeah, you too, man. Glad that you have a lot more free time to stop by. It yeah. works out for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Hope you save some of that <laughs> cash, too. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, always smart. Chris, we'll be right back with Mike Ward and Pantelis. They'll right. be up next. Uh, their show, Two Drink Minimum, airs Fridays at 4 p.m. on Compound Media. Great. Welcome back to Bennington. Thank you. Mike Ward and Pantelis are in studio. Two Drink Minimum, uh, their show airs Fridays at 4 p.m. East on Compound Media. Mike Special, Mike Ward Infamous, is available now on Amazon Pride on Twitter at Mike Ward CA and at Big P number 4H. Now, in honor of Compound Media, everybody's doing their upside down okay. Is that the whole thing? <laughs> I think it's done now. I can't keep up. I only found out about this the other day with the Coastie that was doing it. Did you see that story? I, I don't know which story I saw, but I saw them saying that as a white supremacist sign. Yeah. It's not. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay yeah. to me, right? Right. Yeah. What are we supposed to do? Get rid of okay after all these years? <laughs> Chris, you go back into the double thumbs up. Right? Yeah, always a double thumbs up. That's yeah, my I can't thing. Do That's that. super racist. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that God. means you hate trannies. <laughs> yeah. oh, Jesus, no. People are like, why does he want transsexuals <laughs> to die? Sunk. Now Jim Norton's <laughs> mad at us. Um, <laughs> I watched Jimmy do a set the other night that was so pro transsexual. And I see that he's still going through it, and the audience is like, <laughs> okay, that's the right thing to do. Uh, but it was really, really funny. And he was like, I don't know if that connected. I go, oh, it did. It worked well for me. I was having the time of my life. Uh, you guys have heard about the Norm Mac uh, McDonald stuff. He was yeah. with, in, with me last week. And it was funny. So it had already blown up that he was defending those guys. But then while I was on the air, the second thing blew up with him. Which was the second With thing. the Down syndrome. Well, he used the word Down syndrome, uh, I guess, in a joking manner. So, uh, Is no, that but, not cool anymore? I mean, no, it's done. It's okay. over. What is the word we're using, Chris, now? Special needs? No, absolutely not. That what? says that they need something. Oh, shit. <laughs> special, special independence. Special abilities is what we say now. That's for superheroes, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like they're superheroes. <laughs> but no, this is... And Mike, you know as much as anybody, the whole table could turn over so fast yeah. now. Yeah, like Norm, I didn't. It, it was crazy. Like he wasn't even defending Louis no. or Roseanne. He he was just saying that Louis would understand what Roseanne's been going through. And yeah. the way he defended it, like when I when I saw the thing blow up, I was like, I'm gonna go read what happened. And I was like, okay, this is nothing. Which is basically right. what 2018 is now. He, like people freak out and then you read about it and you go, this doesn't make sense. He said this. I thought it was so interesting. He goes, because you can't forgive anyone, the only defense now is to deny. And I was watching Kavanaugh. I was like, I have no idea who this girl is. You know what I mean? Like the Supreme Court guy is just saying, 
definitely don't you because you can't say hey when i was 17 18 i used to get hammered blackout drunk i don't know whether i did it or not how long you got to go back you know what i mean this is almost 40 years for this guy and for her he could have said weren't we crazy fucked up kids i'm sorry you know but that would be you're off the table yeah no not anymore now even with louis what were they saying? That they want a time, a specific time for him to be able to get back? Who decides on the time? The mob. The mob is going to decide when they move on to the next person. Shouldn't the mob be the crowd? If yeah. They wanna, the crowd if they want to watch him. Yeah. Well, that night, he got a standing ovation in and out, and everybody was glad to see him. But a lot of people who don't go to that club or go out to any clubs at all were upset. That's it's, the weird it's thing about weird it. now that we're trying to please people that'll never come see us. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's what happened. I mean, you guys work with Anthony, but it wasn't his fans that were upset no. with him. It was people that he had never met before, and they can send enough cards and letters or whatever the fuck you do when you're pissed off these days and off we go to the races yeah oh I, that's it emails that's what the kids are doing i, I was worried kinds. when uh when um norm's show on netflix yeah. came out it they generally always come out at midnight eastern yeah. and it like at two in the morning it wasn't out yet yeah and i got like really angry and i guess they were doing it uh midnight la time it was weird because it seemed like and i said to him i go well you got a lot of heat for this show that's you know but um, I don't, I mean, they released this, but I don't know where it goes from yeah. from here. And they didn't promote it at all. No, at like, all. I yeah. fucking love Norm. And he's like, everything I listen to, like, I, I, he's, everything he's in is in my favorites. Yeah. And I couldn't even find it. I had to search wow. Norm MacDonald yeah. has a show. Have you, have you seen any of it? Because when he says to James, Jane Fonda, uh, do you do a... You do a Brando impression is the fucking hardest I laughed for a while. How? Why would she know how to do a Brando impression? It's such a relaxed, kickback show. Nobody's going for I mean, like I, I said this to him that day. You had Jane Fonda on and never brought up the controversies. You know what I mean? So he's just fooling around. Yeah. He's not trying to, to do anything. I, I still can't believe how they took it. And also, there was a, a writer who writes for Samantha B show. I don't mm -hmm. know if you saw this tweet. Yeah, She tweeted out and she said, well, clearly this guy, we shouldn't be listening to him. He tweeted that uh, he didn't know racism existed until Sasha Baron Cohen's show came out. So this guy has no idea what's going on. As if he meant it literally. She couldn't get the sarcasm, right. that dry humor that Norm does. And she wrote that on Twitter. Like, we're all overreacting because he doesn't know what's going on. That was the thing that Norm said to me. He goes, I, I can't believe comedians against you know what i mean yeah and I, the way he said it you could see that is like that shock this generational shock that we're going down like we always thought comedy trumped everything yeah you know it used to be it used to be us versus them mm -hmm. on everything like whether it was right left like you had comics that did get in trouble and every other comic was behind them right and now that kind of disappeared yeah. Like the whole, uh, uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Nanette, oh, like saying that she's never heard of Norm Macdonald. That's yeah. the dumbest. <laughs> yes. That, how <laughs> fucking, how disconnected can you be yeah. that you've never heard of Norm Macdonald? Her and a lot of other non-comics yeah. have yeah. not heard of Norm But you're Macdonald. right, like the whole thing about um, Louie and some of the guys on Tough Crowd is they totally disagreed with each other, but yeah. it doesn't mean it can't make you laugh. I remember listening to Patrice O'Neill going, that doesn't even make sense, his point, <laughs> and be howling. You know what I mean? Because he's funny. Whether you agree with him is something different, something completely different. Something happened that comics now want to be right instead yeah. of just wanting to be funny. Yeah. Like well, when I go see a comic, like this summer, one of the sets that I saw that was my favorite was your set when you were you did your thing about yeah. how white guys used to have it good <laughs> yeah. and I was like that's so it was so good it was yeah. such a good set and you know but I, I was I was looking at the comedy I wasn't going okay he made a joke about Nazis he right. might be pro-Nazi yeah. it's, it's, people are just stupid now that's always uh, funny to do that kind of shit and lately I've been going well you got us uh, you know, but guys, <laughs> yeah, we had a good run. Yeah, yeah, it was a hell of a run. But see, that's the fucking thing of e there is this thing where you cannot, or people are even a little nervous about being seen laughing. 
yeah. at a fucking joke. Yeah. That I don't get at all. That I don't even understand at all. Just because I laughed with somebody it wouldn't even mean that I agreed with them, even slightly. They assume that part of the process now is outrage. Because even at the airport in Montreal, a guy walked up to Mike and told him in French, hey, I'm sure you're used to people spitting on you, but I just want to tell you I'm a big fan. So he assumed that Mike's used to getting <laughs> yeah. attacked. People spit yeah. on me at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, okay, that's the norm. That's really funny, too. I was just, uh, this comes out because I'm doing the MS with Brewer, and Brewer said that he lives in some, you know, regular suburban neighborhood. And a woman said to him, well, uh, you know, I could never watch you because you're so filthy and dirty. And he's like, based on what? What joke? She goes, I don't know. She had no. He said he literally felt like punching her. <laughs> he said if it was a guy, he might have punched. But that's the thing. People assume now that if you're a comedian. Well, you know, you know, who took the latest heat was Gaffigan. Gaffigan has got a bunch of and who could be cleaner or whatever. Really? Sweeter. Who did he piss but, off? craft beer people because he <laughs> did a bit on cbs sunday morning he goes i don't care i just want a beer a regular beer i don't want to hear about it i don't want to go through it and i was laughing because i'm like he's gonna take some shit for this because i've seen the way people talk about craft beer like it was their babies so stupid isn't that hilarious <laughs> of all people Jim yes gaffigan. gaffigan how yeah if yeah. you get offended by something jim gaffigan says yeah. You're way too sensitive. I think the only thing to be offended by is he won't stop having children. Yeah. That's yeah. at a certain point. At a certain point, that has to stop. But uh, see if you can even find any of the backlash, because he was bringing up that he's getting a ton of backlash. Is he going to release an apology? Yes, <laughs> I really do. Like a really obscure beer from each uh, state in America or each county we're in now. So ludicrous of well, you, all people. You, <laughs> we're going to be in jail by the end of the month yeah. if yeah. Yeah. get in trouble. <laughs> well, you were in some heat up in Canada, yeah. right? I got sued by my government because yeah. of a joke, and I was found guilty. Um, had to pay $42,000. There's a thing called the Human Rights Commission. And I had a joke about this little boy that was a local celebrity in Montreal. He was a, like a Make-A-Wish kid. And uh made fun of him and I was found guilty. They said that I was uh, treating him, uh, um, it was, I forget the term they used, but like I was treating him differently because he was disabled and I was trying to explain to them that the fact that I was making fun of him, even though he was disabled, meant that I was treating him exactly like right. I treat everyone else. And they, so I got fined 42 grand and uh, we're fighting it. Now we're in, uh, we're under appeal and uh, if Plus I lose, fees. we'll, uh, yeah, yeah, lawyers is what kills yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Right? So far, I'm I'm in for a little over 150 thousand. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Jesus Christ! And you know, we were like, "Oh, well, that'll never happen in America," but we're definitely in, in in that direction. Yeah. I also think it's interesting that most of these things have never been in America, have been brought to a court of law. But people don't want that person to work anymore. Yeah. At what point do you say a person can't work no matter what they do? And people are always saying this has nothing to do with the First Amendment. He's allowed saying what he said, but yeah. we're going to make him lose everything. Yeah, that's that's that well, is. Sensitive. Here's the thing. They, they got the, the First Amendment down on this. If the government, like in your case, came after you, it would be cut and dry here because yeah. that's First Amendment here. We forget that all the corporations that hire you really don't care about anything other than selling stuff. Yeah. Right. So if someone calls up and said, I'm not going to buy your product because you, you know, uh, put something on a, on a TV show I don't like, they would just go, oh, then we won't, we won't support that TV show anymore. And before you know it, uh, there are anybody who does a political show or an edgy humor show can't sell anything but fucking dick cream, and yeah. that's that. That's what happens. Yeah, like in the old days. Um, um. Well, what's the guy's name? The hustler guy. Uh oh, uh, from Larry, 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 Flint. Uh, Larry yeah. Flint. When Larry Flint got sued, like everyone was uh 
behind them, even though they weren't necessarily New York Times. Yeah, Time, yeah, because they got the it was, like it was first speech amendment. Is yeah. like a, it's like an onion. So you get rid of the the first layer, and then you, it always smells like an onion. So you get rid of the second layer, right. third layer, and then after like twenty years, no one can say anything. That's what's happening in comedy right now, and no one seems to care. Like comics are are bitching about it, but no one else seems to really care. Well, they they. Yeah, I don't know if anybody really gets the free speech thing. And a lot of it, I think, is because the Internet is so nasty in every comment section, right? Yeah, yeah. That they're they're kind of lumping in all that kind of talk together. At, a same, at the same time, we do have a president who will fucking rip somebody as if he's Rickles. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> He'll just fucking tear into somebody. And um, I, uh, he's the Teflon Don. You got to yeah. give him whether you voted for him or not. You got to say, how does he keep these plates spinning? It's unbelievable <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, something came up at the airport. Um, Stormy Daniels says that his his penis looks weird or something. That was on CNN for like a, a couple mushroom of hours. cap. But is that what they were discussing on CNN? Mm -hmm. They were serious flood related news. They were doing <laughs> yes. <laughs> but here's the thing: the guy. Part. Might have a mushroom cap for a fucking. No one's that. And here's what's like kind of brilliant about her move is like, how does he? He's not gonna whip his dick out yeah. there. <laughs> this is an app. Like he's probably gonna make his wife in a couple of days say, "Look, it's like a bullet. It really <laughs> is perfectly like a bullet." Uh, that would if there was a president that would do that. It would be him, though. Just whip it out. As close out. as uh, this yeah. is as close as we'll ever get to a guy putting his dick on the fucking table. He tweets a picture of his cock. Yeah, yeah. he's best. like, "Oops, yes, <laughs> oh, didn't mean to do that." Uh, stole my phone, Earl. You were a big fan of Obama, right? Very much so. You yes. voted for him twice. Yes. The head of his cock. What was it? Do you have, have you heard anything at all about shape or whatever? Never heard anything about it, yeah. about his junk. No. Okay. So why'd you vote for him? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> at the end of the day, what did you vote? <laughs> Just race? Not at all. I mean, he he seemed like the right person for that position, mm -hmm. and he was the right guy for the job. An excellent orator, a great statesman. Why not? And how did it all work out for you? Were you happy with it? Um. It you happy a, with Trump? He's a New Yorker like you. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny he doesn't come back to New York, though. He, he's been back one night, I believe, since he's become president. And, you know, his wife never left that place. She was in there. Every, now she never leaves. She's like a prisoner, like Rapunzel yeah. or something. I can't imagine if someone in your family ran for office and you not saying, please don't, for all of our fucking sake. Do you realize how hideous our history is as a family, <laughs> all the awful things we've done over the years. I'd like to know, I just try to think what age did I become unelectable? It had to be middle school. You know what I mean? It had to be by the time it was seventh or eighth grade, I was never going to move ahead. <laughs> Especially the way it is now for the, you ever think about that? Yeah. There's a future president that's sharing dick pics right now. With right. His girlfriend. And we definitely are going to see First lady tits. Yeah. We've kind of seen side yeah. tits with uh, Melania, but we've never seen nipple. Someone said they're shaped like mushroom caps. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Chris? You're holding up the paper? You want to plug away? Two Drink Minimum with Mike Ward and Pantelis airs Fridays at 4 p.m. East on Compound Media. Mike's special, Mike Ward Infamous, is available now on Amazon Prime. For Mike's dates, go to MikeWard.ca. For Pantelis's, go to PantelisComedy.com. And you are infamous now. Yeah, yeah, because of the court thing. Because yeah. of the court thing. It's weird, though, because uh, the like me getting sued at first, I thought that was horrible. And then I realized it, the the worst thing is the backlash on the Internet. So right. everyone that like I know, like what Norm probably went through. But the good thing is now it's so quick, like people were freaking out about Norm. And then three days later, it was all forgotten. It really is true. You've just got to ride it out yeah. until it's over. He, he should have instead of like done the view and the whole thing yeah. sort of t he should have just went like rented a cabin in montana for four days let it go yeah he would have came back and he wouldn't no one would have cared yeah nobody would yeah. have brought it up to him even because they would have moved on to the next four even his friends wouldn't say oh i forgot for two days you were really in the fucking bucket yeah that wouldn't have happened that way at all uh, the really weird thing is do you have you guys met him 
Yeah. He's totally one of the sweetest people and the most thoughtful and uh, like empathetic people. I know that that's hard to believe for people <laughs> who see him as a, a demon, but if you listen to anything that he said, he was like, I want everybody to be okay at the yeah, end Yeah, like of the day. every every interview he did after his whole thing, he, he's a very sweet, like a country type guy. Yeah. Super smart, but very, you can tell he's from a small town and he's got small town values. Oh, yeah. He's like outside of Quebec City, right? Yeah, like yeah. not even like one day we'll go in and get ice cream. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like he's yeah. far out in the sticks. Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, and that's always to me like one of the most amazing things that people can come from almost anywhere and be able to get over. You know, there are a lot of comedians because they happen to be born around New York. Doesn't help you to be born in New York because you're too fucking street then. But if you're from Long Island or North Jersey, like you could take a train into the city and still go back and sleep at your mom's house. The number of guys who have gotten sitcoms and movies and TV, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. All a lot of it has to do with being born close to the city. Think of the numbers: Seinfeld, Sandler, Ray all Romano. those guys came in. What Ray Romano, Ray Romano from Queens, um, John Stewart, and like you can't even go into other states and start to pull out. Mm -hmm. These are guys that are billionaires now. Ray Romano just literally bought Utah the other day. He goes, just give it. He goes, I don't know what else I want. Just give me the entire state. It must be hard, though, learning your craft in a city like New York. Like, remember, like, your first 50 shows, how, yeah. how bad you are? But, and you're playing, but you're not playing good rooms. No. You're in New York City, but you're in some fucking pizza joint in front well, of three People yeah, we got, a, we got a young uh, comic. Introduce him, uh, introduce him, Earl. Come on. Hey, guys, I'm Vinay. This hey, is Vinay. Vinay, Vinay uh, he does a bar show. At a pizza shop, actually. At a pizza shop. He's been here two days, and he keeps booking the comics who come into oh, the really? show <laughs> for his fucking pizza gig. <laughs> Are you paying him any money? Are you paying Joe List any money? I get drink tickets. Imagine if we did a Lifetime movie about Aziz. He has the same exact voice. <laughs> I get chills from it. The only thing is that you're social. You interact with other people. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm that big of a jackass yet. Oh! Whoa. I don't know what's worse, that he called him a jackass or that he said yet. Yet, he yeah. Knows he, he knows it's going. <laughs> Where's um, the pizza shop? It's a bar. It's not a pizza shop. It's a wine bar. Ooh. Yeah, it's Fancy two doors trendy. down from the cellar, <laughs> and he goes up, and when people are online at the cellar, I go, why wait online when you can come right down here for $2 and see 84 comedians? <laughs> What's What are they charging to get in? Uh, I was going to do donations, but I've been trying to keep it free so I have a younger crowd to come through. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. You're in the village. There's a lot of freshmen there. Yeah, yeah, you'll do well with a free show. Yeah. So what are you paying Joe List? Uh, maybe two drink tickets this time. Two drink tickets. <laughs> drink. You can't approach the comedians. I'm telling you that. I don't. <laughs> I, when when Gervais is in here next week, leave him alone. Don't tell him about your bar fucking show. Or McDougal. I like him because he has hustle. He does have yeah. hustle. That is great. And he dresses he dresses comfortably. And he, he he dresses like his mom's ready to carry him up the steps and lay him <laughs> in the bed. <laughs> and he'll tell Gervais, he'll be like, Look, you're big, you get four drink tickets. You get four drink tickets. <laughs> if you That's come in, the place will go crazy. You should just come in and say it's me Aziz and say a full he goes, <laughs> Come on down here, I wanna show you something. That's my new brand, being yeah. Aziz. Your voice is literally his. It's crazy. Like Aziz. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right, here's what we're doing. While we talk, you go find a couple of his bits and then do them on the air and we'll see if we can tell the difference. <laughs> All, right. All right, go ahead. Hope he does Randy. Randy was so short, though. Did that, you ever it, notice that? Yeah, it was barely anything. It was barely anything, was and great. the kids exploded for it. Yeah. Two Drink Minimum with Mike Ward and Pantelis. There's Fridays at 4 p.m. East on Compound Media. Mike's special, Mike Ward Infamous, is available now on Amazon Prime. And it's on uh, iTunes and Google Play, too, the yeah. album. I'd like to be like in top five on iTunes. That'd cool. be cool. If um, and 
iTunes, do they pay you much when people go and just listen to your album? Or uh, it, like, it's people have to buy it on uh, iTunes, okay, and good. they they take thirty percent. Like, they're really shitty. Yeah, like they're really shitty. In the old days, distributors used to take a lot, but at least they'd bring your album to a store. Right. Whereas now, iTunes just goes, "Hey, we're taking thirty percent." I was watching this thing with Daryl Hall, and he was uh, in the interview saying, "No, we never saw any of the money." We never saw, they, they sold like 40 million albums or something. He goes, no, we really got paid, uh, you know, touring. Oh, um, really? Yeah, they left that alone. But they get into this accounting that would take place back then. You would never see the fucking money. They would just fuck them up. Something's happening now, it's serious. I heard some artists, yeah, I think that. Were... Yeah, I think that got fixed, though. What was that? I don't know, Earl was telling me about it. It had something to do with... Uh, Sirius was being charged differently than the, the terrestrial radio. Yeah, terrestrial it, radio. I don't think wasn't getting charged at all on top of what they already pay for pre nineteen seventy two or something. Yeah. But you said it all went through. Yeah, the bill was passed last night. Oh, good. We got Earl down just handling everything for us in DC. <laughs> <laughs> He's able to walk in there. Well, Earl goes back in old school radio when the um, this was the best when I started radio because they would come in with the new album. And some coke. So you could be like, this fucking sounds great. Triumph? We definitely want to play this band. But Earl, were you ever in for that stuff? No, I just missed the, as they call it, the the fun times. Yeah, it was great. I remember the, the funny line being, it smells like a hit. And then we would all laugh at the shit we were putting on the radio. Yeah. It's true. You, you started uh, down south. Yeah. I know you did comedy in Miami. Well, they, uh, I started in Tampa, had a club down there, and that club led to the radio show. And then the radio show exploded, and we were in Orlando and Miami and Jacksonville and parts of Georgia and stuff like that. But that was like, I don't think we'll ever go back to that kind of scene where everybody in a town was listening to the radio show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you literally overnight could, and my club would fill up because I would just say, hey, aren't these guys funny? Um, but now there's so many choices that everybody has. Back then, you all people were like, hey, how'd you make the number one? You just had to beat one other show. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like there was two rock stations. <laughs> beat the fuck out of those guys. You're on your way. Your life was set. Now I don't, when people are like, how do you get into radio? I go, I don't even know what to tell you. It's changed so much. Everyone has their own niche. You go yes. after what you really want. Yes. But no, everybody can put it out there, but nobody could, you know, I put kids through school. I bought houses. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was like, you could have a life doing that. Now you're like, you talk about the hustle. Everybody's hustling now, no matter who they are. The other thing that I was seeing about clubs, and I was talking to this with the young comics, somebody was saying, well, uh, I, you know, I went to this club in the middle of the country and I didn't draw well enough. I go, why should you fucking draw? You know what I mean? The club is supposed to draw. That's the way it was. Yeah. It was like, we've got the comedians. If you come here, you're going to be entertained. That was the drop. I, I think um, the amount of guys, the whole time I had my club that I expected to draw, we gave, you know, the tickets were more expensive and that was the deal. But I didn't expect most headliners to draw, but they came into the club and Brian Regan was there and they were like, oh, this is great. We'll come back next week. But I didn't expect him to be able to pull that off. It didn't happen that way. Now, I don't know what they want. Social media is yeah. supposed to have these yeah. kids that are 25, 26, fill up a fucking club. It's crazy to me. It's weird. They're, like this summer at uh, Just for Laughs in Montreal, there was that uh, variety show or um, the the... The 10 comics that yeah, watched. Yeah, Varieties Top 10. They had that and guy there. Um, there was a guy that had never name? done stand-up. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and all the other, yeah. The yeah. Southern Mama or whatever. Yeah. It's, and all the other comics were yelling at him. Yeah, that was the best. When I yeah. watched that on YouTube, yeah, I got so it. excited. Yeah. I fucking love bullying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they never tell you how enjoyable it is, but God, <laughs> it could be a lot of fun. No, but he, he deserved it because he was, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. He yeah. was being a dick and treating treating comics like garbage. Well, he had no idea the way the whole thing worked. Yeah. He did not know what the shot was when he got there. He just treated it like he was on YouTube. And he was talking about the comics that were just on stage. Yeah. And talking shit about what they were talking about. So, right. of course, everyone's going to confront him. Yeah. He's not even a real comic. 
That's fucking hilarious. It's like if they just let a heckler. Does that drive you crazy that that fell? That's funny. I always see that when it's like certain people, if something falls, they can't relax. Yeah, I, could, I was like, looking at it. Yep. Somebody could. You know, I know. You'll dive on the floor if I drop something. <laughs> I got I, lo I love like fucking pig pen over here. <laughs> chucking stuff around. And he wants, but some people are like, something bad could happen if someone steps on it. Yeah. I've never in my life saw something bad happen. Because something fell off a table. But it could though, Ron. So that's why you got to pick it up. Were you like that when you were a little kid? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Magic thinking, right? Oh, like, a lot of magic thinking. If I yeah. keep things clean, maybe my dad won't do heroin anymore. Oh, but <laughs> it doesn't matter how clean it was, Ron. He still liked doing heroin. And I don't blame him. I mean, no, it's heroin. It is relaxing. Why would he care about a clean coffee table when he had some heroin? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even know it was clean. Yeah. yeah. It was clean for him all the time. The best thing, the really best thing about being on heroin is it really, uh, cigarettes will last so much longer <laughs> than they do. <laughs> Like, if you ever see a junkie, there's always, like, little burn holes all in their oh, yeah. shirts and their jacket. It's the same cigarette for three days. <laughs> Just trying to get it lit. One pull every three hours. That has to be weird to have a dad on heroin. On heroin, right? yeah. yeah. What was your mom? Your mom was just coke? No, my mom was sober. Okay. She didn't even drink. Really? Your mom didn't drink and your dad was on heroin? Your mom <laughs> yes. is so, like, she accepts a lot of yeah. shit. Yeah, no shit. Uh, but yeah, so then, uh, yeah, so she, um, she was, didn't do anything and she was just like put up with his shit. It was. Enabler is what we call that. That's it. Exactly. She <laughs> yeah. was an enabler. Which, but what about you, Chris? Did you get the love that you deserved? Oh, I know. I did not. How no. did you deal with it? Just Twinkies? No, just, just a lot of just fatty a, food? If I just feed myself <laughs> some more McDonald's, then love will, love will be there, won't it? Yeah. I'd eat another Big Mac, fatty. <laughs> have, have another fucking chicken nugget. Did your dad, Your I guess your dad stopped doing heroin? No, no, no. He didn't stop doing heroin. He passed away. Okay. So That's he stopped is what you're so saying. All, yeah. all, yeah, all in. That, that is a I never stopping. thought of a overdose death, death as passing away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he passing left away. us surrounded by other junkies. <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by loved ones. What is it, Earl? Oh, Some Earl doing? trouble in the minds? Oh, good God. What are you committed to take a picture? Yeah. Okay. I was coming to throw us out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've overstayed Everyone your thinks welcome. he's security as it is. <laughs> Go ahead and read away. Mike Ward and Penn tell us they're in studio and two drink minimum airs Fridays at 4 p.m. East on Compound Media. Mike's special, Mike Ward Infamous, is available now on Amazon Prime, and the album version is available on iTunes and Google Play on Twitter at Mike Ward C A and yes. at Big P number four H for Mike States, go to Mike Ward C A. For Batellis's, go to Batelliscomedy.com. How you like Compound Media? We're late. They, they treat us pretty good. Yeah. They let yeah. us do whatever we want. Right. Nobody's yelling at us. And we do the show out of Montreal. When they offered the show, like uh, Anthony, you know, he he has money, but he like he wasn't going to give us a lot of money. And right. So it wasn't enough to come do it in New York. So we can do it in Montreal. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. You yeah. guys like being based out of Montreal? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, I stay in Montreal because I'm with my, I've been with the same woman forever, and yeah. she likes Montreal. And uh, if if I left Montreal, she wouldn't follow. So right. I'm waiting for her to get a little older, and then <laughs> I'll leave <laughs> <Yeah>. Montreal. Do <laughs> like you know what? This yeah. isn't working. Fuck it. I need. <laughs> Where would you live life. if you could live anywhere though? Uh, probably like I really like Florida. Yeah. That, so that's a horrible for show business, but I really like yeah. Orlando. Well, that's the funny thing about it now is if you, once you're somewhat established, then all you had to do is live near an airport anyway. Yeah. Doesn't matter at all. And a lot of people are starting to do that. You know, like the whole thing of living in New York or LA, both of them, you're just carrying a bag of do doorknobs after a while. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've already pitched myself. They know who I am. If something comes up. They'll call. Yeah. A lot of people get really bitter too. Yeah. Like I've noticed, like uh, people that don't live in New York or LA aren't as bitter because you don't get rejected every day. Right. Well, here's the thing. Any of this, if somebody would have told you when you were an open mic or this is your going to be your life, you're like, yeah, okay, man. I'll yeah. tell you. Like yeah. if someone stopped by when you were in high school and said, this is it, you just... You're going to be doing gigs and you'll be friends with really funny people and you'll never have an alarm clock. You're like, okay, take that life yeah. right now. But somehow you, people turn around and go, look at Chappelle. Look at Seinfeld. What are you fucking staring yeah. at those guys for? 
You know, that's a that's like getting mad at a guy who had a scratch off. It just yeah. <laughs> even they didn't plan on that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, when I first started doing comedy, my my end goal was to make thirty grand a year. Yeah. Like I, that's really what I want to make. And whenever I get sort of jealous or bitter, I always think about that and I'm like, Okay, I yeah. I I gotta quit bitching. Right. Eight more thousand and you'll be there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <It's all> there. <laughs> my That's only I'm plugging the album. My only goal in life when I was a kid was to not work in a factory because I was in a factory town. And the funny thing is, now all those factories are closed anyway. <laughs> I mean I'd probably work it at a Walmart or something. But you know, the whole thought of everything was like, I can't fucking go into those places. You know how much I must suck for someone that like 30 years ago was like, I want to be a comic, but fuck it. I'm going to take the safe route. Right. And he's working in a factory. And then 20 years later, factory closes. He's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I could have been a comic. Yeah. Fuck. yeah. And it was really true. It was like a lot of people were going, I don't want to risk everything. And then the world changes, you know, it's fucking every, this goddamn computer has changed every industry that's out there everything i you know the village voice went out of business you're like that was 70 year old paper and people went in it's like i'm gonna be a journalist i'll write no you won't motherfucker no you won't you know everybody you know the n number of bands who thought that they were going to retire on their catalog and i meet them all the time you know the biggest fucking movie star uh, i mean rock stars that you could think of and they're all like man i, I guess i lost 90 million that we were counting on. Yeah. You Crazy. Have to risk it. If, if you're not willing to risk something, you yeah. won't get any reward. You won't get the reward that you're dreaming of. You have to be willing to put something on the line. Yeah. It's like poker, right? right. If you're not going to put enough on the line, you're not going to get anything back. So you got to put some money down. Yeah, this is true. Chris, you should have risked your dad's love. You should have said, Daddy? <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Is that what you used to call him? Daddy. What did you call him? <laughs> I think I call him dad towards the end when it was really bad when I was in high school. I'd call him John, like he was a stepdad. Oh, oh. It was it got it got fucking pretty uh pretty hectic. The house. rebellious teenager. Yeah. Oh, I still was terrified of him. I mean, if I've like one day like he was, I was like he's gonna beat the shit out of me, but he didn't, which was nice. Even was when guy? you were uh, big enough to do it. Yeah. No, he was still a scary man. Oh. Yeah. I saw the jail pictures of him. He did look kind of scary. Yeah. He looked like a, a scary Jim Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> He was a good looking man, though. Mm. Compared to yourself. Jim Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> you always lay the, my dad was a junkie story on chicks. Because yeah. that's, oh, that's yeah. got to be so great. Yeah, that's, you know? that's yeah. fucking, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah feel bad for me. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I remember my fourth birthday, I was waiting at the window <laughs> for my dad to come home, but he had OD'd that yeah. night. <laughs> Tell so, me more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, later. Let, Let me later. help heal you. <laughs> Plug away, Christopher. Mike Ward and Pentelis are in studio. Two drink minimum with uh, it airs Fridays at 4 p.m. East on Compound Media. And uh, Mike's special, Mike Ward Infamous, is available now on Amazon Prime and the album version on iTunes and Google Play. Well, even like look at what you guys are doing with Anthony. That gig didn't exist. You yeah. know what I mean? When no, I first, yeah. you know, it used to take millions of dollars to be able to, you know, do anything. And now people can do it from wherever they want to. And the whole thing of, you know, to build a fan base in a way that you couldn't before. I remember when guys would just have like a fucking newsletter that they would send out to people. You know, like, hey, sign up. I give out free tickets the next time I'll be back. And everyone looked at those guys like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why don't you go work a real job if you're going to do all that shit? You know, that's actually marketing. Who the yeah. hell wants to do that? I, I want to go back to something because it's yeah. something that I found interesting because you got to, to sit down with Norman last week. Yeah. They were saying that a lot of the people that work with uh, Jimmy Fallon started crying after they heard <laughs> what Norm had said in that interview. Is that true? Because that seems a little absurd. I never know whether that kind of stuff is true or not. You know what I mean? It seems like Everybody panics a lot more than they used to. I mean, I remember even like when I heard, oh, Louie was at the cellar last night. I go, fuck, how did I, how did I miss it? I had no idea that it was going to turn into that big a thing. I thought he's going to put his big toe into the pond and see how people, you know, the crowd that's there treat him. I did not see the rumbling coming and, and certainly not the club 
taking shit. And I think Fallon got so beat up over just ruffling Trump's hair. Well, here's the thing, too, that su surprised me. Did you see the number of uh, comedians who pulled out of the New Yorker thing because they were going to do an interview with Steve Bannon? And it was Pat Oswald. It was, do you remember who else was on this? John list? Mulaney. John Mulaney, they said, was the first. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, Judd Apatow. And that was just, like, they would not have been on stage with him, but the same festival, there would have been a guy talking with Bannon, not necessarily saying he's the best guy, but, hey, you have some ideas, let's, you know, hash it out. I think you're wrong. It literally was going to be one of those kind of interviews. I know these comedians, these free speech guys, are going, we won't even come in if that's represented. That's a bit much. Next, yeah. Uh, yeah. we're going to start drinking from different water fountains. Right. Yeah. And Earl, you even said that those fountains were even better. You know, you never hear from that thing. He goes, the black fountains in those days, because there was less black people, oh. they were never, you know what I mean? They were always cleaner. First of all, I noticed this, no one is more germaphobic than black guys. You know, black women are definitely more germaphobic. I say a lot of guys, too. No, a lot of guys are really, really germaphobic. You know, that whole, like, hey, if you, in the, if you go to a restaurant, hey, can you boil us in water? It's always women. Can you boil us some water? No, if you or put, do they want to put their forks put in the it? Forks in the in um hot Stay water. Stay home. I've really? never you're seen insane. That. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. insane if you're that afraid of Why germs. are you even going to a restaurant? No. Like put your hands in the microwave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People are petrified these days. Uh dudes, it was so great to uh see you guys. So glad that you guys came in, man. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having us. It was yeah, fun. Thanks for having us. How long are you gonna be in the city? Until uh, Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I uh, you've done if you've been down the compound media? Yeah. I love that street because it reminds me of that one block feels like the 80s again. <laughs> that one block, <laughs> you're like, oh shit, I could get mugged here, huh? Yeah, yeah. And that's the only block <laughs> has that, left yeah. in yeah. New York. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last, and you grew up in that New York, right? Yeah, that weird, like, early, yeah. like, late 80s, early 90s New York where, like, shit got weird sometimes. I remember know. when you used to come into this town taking shit off and putting it in your sock, <laughs> like, I can't wear this, yeah. you know? But that area is, like, seriously the last place in Manhattan. And it's changing now. That's like, great, in yeah. between each time I go down there, yeah. I saw, like, there's a gym across this. Because oh. the first time I'm going down, there's, like, still, like, regular people selling cloth and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, you could go in and buy rugs. Yeah, that's what I, they yeah. say. Kumia, whatever you want to say about him, he really cleans up a neighborhood. He so. really yeah. does. <laughs> He's basically like a gay guy. Yeah. Two gay guys will move in, <laughs> open up a club in a gallery, and suddenly the... Ah. If you really, the, the south side of Chicago, let's send in two dozen gay guys, <laughs> and that place will be, no, black people won't be able to afford it anymore, <laughs> but it will be safe in no time at all. Uh, great to see you guys, Likewise. man. It was great to see you up in Montreal, too. Uh, best of luck to both of you. And I, uh, you know, I hope you guys defending Norm oh, yeah. doesn't lead to everybody attacking you. No. I just want to say I'm in the middle of the mob. Whatever the mob thinks, that's what I think. <laughs> I agree with the mob. The mob is safety. Love the mob. Okay. Huh? Two Drink Minimum with Mike Ward and Pentelis airs Fridays at 4 p.m. East on Compound Media. Mike's special, Mike Ward Infamous, is available now on Amazon Prime. And the album, uh, album version is available on iTunes and Google Play on Twitter at Mike Ward CA and at Big P, the number four H. And for Mike's dates, go to MikeWard.ca. And for Pantelis's, go to PantelisComedy.com. All right, this Friday, we've got a mass with Jim Brewer and then also Dave Davies from the Kinks, one of the great guitar players of all time. Um, and what do we got tomorrow, Chris? Uh, and then uh, tomorrow is... Well, well, we'll worry about it then. Yeah. We don't just worry about it then? Yeah, let's worry <laughs> about it then. Plug anything. Yeah. Uh, also, just uh, a week from today is our interview with Ricky Gervais. It's happening next Wednesday, September 26th, 5 p.m. at the Village Underground in New York City. Go to com for a chance at free tickets. All right. See you guys later.